Ladies and gentlemen, coming up 1,000 meter women semi final. Please stay tuned. 女士们、先生们，女子一千米项目半决赛即将开始，敬请期待。Ready for the final session of the final day of World Cup Beijing. We welcome you to coverage of ISU's World Cup short track speed skating from the Capital Indoor Stadium in Beijing, China. Patrick Keen is with you as we wrap up the third stop on the World Cup circuit. And a busy final session will open things up as we take a look at our schedule of events with the quarterfinals of both the men's and the women's thousand. And we'll get to the quarterfinals of the second running of the 500. That will lead to the semis of each of those events and the finals a little bit later. And then we'll wrap things up with the 3,000 women's A final relay and then the men's 5,000 A final relay as well. Crowd's been fantastic over the course of this weekend. Short Track World Cup will move on to Seoul, South Korea next weekend, and we'll have coverage of that as well. Some big names, the biggest in the sport. We'll see them race head to head over the course of the next few hours. So sit back wherever you are across the world, no matter what time zone, and we will bring you all the action here from Beijing. There is a look at the official schedule. Again, we'll open up with the quarterfinals on both the women's and the men's side in the thousand. And the repechage of today's session wrapped up a little less than an hour ago. And again, we'll conclude with the relays on the men's and women's side. So the skater is about to jump on the ice. We'll have our first event that will start off in less than three minutes. Fans are still settling in, grabbing a couple last concessions and getting ready to enjoy racing on this very fast ice here in Beijing. So as we kick things off, we'll see one of the biggest names on the women's skating circuit, regardless of event, regardless of age. Kim Gilly will be in our first heat of the quarterfinals for the women's thousand. And there's a look at Kim right there in helmet number four. And she has been absolutely electric in her now two years on the senior circuit. It's been an interesting morning of racing as well. A number of penalties, a couple of uh, massive crashes and wipeouts. Fortunately, nobody hurt all that much, but that is short track speed skating. As Yu Ali of China, she will represent the home country here in this opening heat of the quarterfinals. They're waiting to be called onto the ice by Michelle Dumont, the chief referee this weekend in Beijing. We've already seen Kristen Santos Griswold of the United States become the first American ever in World Cup action to claim gold in a World Cup 500 race. We'll see Santos Griswold a little bit later on here in this thousand, she'll be in the third heat. As you get a look at all the officials on schedule for this weekend, Michelle Dumont, the chief referee. Daniel Fiorenza and Brian Wei, who are the assistant referees. The starters, Brian Chartier and Taku Sasaki. Kim Gilly has already laid claim to a gold in the 1500 this weekend. That happened yesterday. 
And China has represented itself fairly well so far on the women's side anyway. A couple of podium finishes. Von Kashin, the veteran, the world champion in the 500. Claims silver behind Santos Griswold yesterday. Gong Li claims silver in the 1500 behind Kim Gilly. On the men's side, just Li Wenlong has been on the podium representing China this weekend. And China did take silver in the mixed relay. But they'll have some great opportunities with both Lou Brothers racing today. We'll see Ren Zhiwei in action. We'll see the Chinese uh, relay teams at the end on the men's side as they will try to pick up a second men's relay gold. So here we go. 21 skaters remain entering these quarterfinals. Four heats, first and second, and a maximum of two third place finishers will advance on to the semifinals. And the 19-year-old Kim Gilly, there's a look at So We Min, the overall number five ranked skater, but top in this class at the 1,000 meter level. A couple of podium finishes already for So in this World Cup season. And here we go, first of four heats in the quarters. Gloria Irati of Italy, Elisa Confortola also of Italy in this first quarter final. Yar Van Kirkhoff of the Netherlands. Those are the six on the ice. Nine laps. And Kim Gilly, we have seen from her over the last, well, certainly a month and a half, but even dating back to last year, she can win races from any position on the ice. In the 1,500 meters, she's typically toward the back in the first half to two-thirds of the race. But now here in the 1,000, she's comfortable being up near the front. So we in right now in the lead. And Kirkhoff of the Netherlands second. Zhu Ali sneaks up at a third, and Gilly is fourth. The two Italians to the back of the pack, and here's the first move attempt by Gilly. Swings wide during the home straight. She is side by side with her teammates, so we men, and Gilly will now take charge. Three laps remain. And now Gilly can control the race, control the pace, and tap the accelerator if she needs to if she feels a pass coming. And there might be one, but they can't get through. So Gilly in the lead. Here's Zhu Ali of China up to second. Again, first and second automatic qualifiers to the semifinals. And Zhu is in qualifying position. It's Kim, it's Zhu, and so we men a tight third, and we'll see if that time will be good enough to move on. So there's another heat victory for the 19-year-old Kim Gilly. Zhu Ali, 27-year-old native of China, appears to be moving on as well. So we are underway on this final session of day three. Thanks for tuning in. And we've really yet to see a race in a while where the game plan of Kim Gilly is not executed to perfection. I mean, she never seems to be caught in a tough spot as far as decision making. And whenever she wants to make a move, however she wants to do it over the context of the race, uncanny ability to execute it every time. And as a result, the 19 year old is but a very familiar finisher at the top of the World Cup podium in her very young senior level career. And so we men does claim third on the photo finish. We'll see if that time is good enough to advance. And again, they'll take a maximum of two third place finishers. 131, 731. So we'll follow that over the course of the next three quarter finals. And now on to the second quarter final. Inside position to the U.S. Olympian, Corey Stoddard. We'll see two Canadians in this race. There's a look at Donna Blay, who's number five of this classification so far here in the thousands. A silver in the thousand at the second World Cup in Montreal a few weeks ago, and a bronze in the 1500 that same weekend. It was kind of her coming out party. There is Stoddard. Yara Bete, outside position for Italy. Moeme Kikuchi and Florence Brunel, the others, in this five-skater quarterfinal heat. 
Now Brunel, 19 years of age, out of Canada. Again, we've talked about her passion and uh, elite background in soccer years ago, but she's a world junior champion last year in the 500, and even silver in the 1,000. So this is a distance race that suits her well. We'll see how she handles it against Bly and Stoddard and the others. Coming up on five laps to go, Stoddard in front. Blind Brunel from Canada follow him. Bette right now fourth, and then Kikuchi. We've seen Corey Stoddard race generally pretty well, and you feel like she's on the verge of getting to consistent semifinals, if not grabbing a spot in an A final here or there. And Stoddard will try to reclaim the lead and does from Donna Bly. And inside two laps to go, still Stoddard trying to pull away. Betsy stumbled as she made a move, still third, kept her balance. And here's the bell for Stoddard in the second quarter final. And she is stretching it out. And Brunel in second position for Canada. Betsy will get third, but her time is almost a second and a half slower than that of So We Min, who finished third in the opening quarterfinal, so that is unlikely to move through. But a solid race by Corey Stoddard. She's on to the semifinals. Couple more quarters to go. And that's the moment. Kind of factored Dene Bly out of the race. Just an inadvertent little bit of contact with her teammate. And that cleared the space for Brunel. And here's likely that little stumble by Bette. A little arm jousting there from Bly. And that took her out. And in the end, pretty direct quarterfinal win for Corey Stoddard. Acknowledgement for a successful race. Her individual day is not yet done. So there are the official results. Betty 133-227. So Brunel and Stoddard advance out of the second quarter. Here's the start list for the third of four heats. And now we'll see Kristen Santos Griswold in arguably her best event, although right now she is just so elite at all three, it's hard to determine which one is her best. Already claimed gold in the 500 this weekend in Beijing. First time an American has ever done that in World Cup action. And she just gets better and better. Camilla Storbowska, along with Zhang Yi of China, Claudia Gagnon, the 24-year-old from Canada, and Taneke Dendok of Belgium. Those are the five. And similar to what I said about Kim Gilly in her first quarterfinal today, same can be said about Kristen Santos Griswold. Kind of when she wants to control a race, I mean, she just has gliding acceleration faster than almost anybody on the track that she puts herself in very good position where she can execute and get past really at any time. The fact that she's third here with about four and a half laps to go, certainly no panic for Santos Griswold because she has another couple of extra gears. Gagnon is right on the heels of Santos Griswold. Stormowska is still leading. Zhang second, and now it looks like the time is right for Santos Griswold. Swings too wide, trying down the back straight, and yes, an easy double pass, and down goes Stormowska as we have less than two laps to go, and free and clear Santos Griswold. Gagnon second, Yang third, and the bell for Santos Griswold. And that crash out by Stormowska will be reviewed. Santos Griswold had no bearing on that, so she will cruise into the line. Gagnon second. Zhang finishes third at 131.58. That will be the fastest third place time so far. 
There have been no advancements by penalty, so that should work in her favor. But they will take a look at the spill that took Stormowska from near the front of this race out of it. So once again, a really solid race for Santos Griswold. They're taking a look at a potential penalty that involves Zhang Yi's of China against Storm Oscar. Not yet resolved. You see the yellow box in the lower left of your screen. And they're also taking a look at a potential penalty involving the same two, but inverted. A potential penalty possibly assessed against Storm Oscar against Zhang Yi's. So a couple of points of contact involving those two. And we'll see how that gets resolved here. So there's a look at Gagnon. And here's the first bit of contact involving 27 and 38. Kind of the lean in there from Storm Oscar. That took her out of the race, but there was another point of contention earlier in that race involving those two. And potential penalty initiated by Zhang. There's Michelle Demonts making the final determination. And there is going to be a penalty assessed here in the third quarter final as the official results come up. And it will be assessed against Storm Oscar of Poland. And that's going to advance Zhang Yi's on to the semifinals. Which now means just one third place finisher at the max would advance. And Santos Griswold easily through, and here's the penalty and a straight on look for not giving space charged against Storm Oscar. So Zhang Yi's pushed through via the penalty. And that will be much to the delight of the home country fans. Gagnon, the other qualifier, into the semifinal. So here we go to the last quarterfinal in the women's thousand. And one from China here, Gong Li, who claimed silver yesterday in the 1500, her first career individual World Cup podium. She'll try to ride the wave of enthusiasm and positivity coming out of that one. Hana Takahashi, Ami Harai of Japan, Lee Soyun of Korea, and Malika Yermak of Kazakhstan. Those are the five in this last quarter final. Gong Lee, 23 years old. Her best event, at least over the course of the first couple of World Cups this season, has been the 1500. And her first individual World Cup podium in that event yesterday. Sometimes when you break through and get on the podium for the first time, it's kind of a, it certainly is a rush. It gives you great confidence that you can beat your competitors more consistently and you know, belief without evidence. But when you have evidence, it can rise you to a new level. We'll see how that pans out. Lee Soyon grabs the lead, three and a half laps to go. Yermak a close second, Gong Lee third. And the two skaters from Japan fourth and fifth. Again, first and second move on to the semifinals. And here's a move from Gong Li. Gets around Li Soyun, and she's in the front with one lap to go. She'll hear the bell. Gong Li. Riding the energy of her first World Cup podium yesterday. Terrific pass. And eases her way through, and she stays alive in the 1,000. And we'll see her in the semifinals a little bit later this afternoon. And you just wonder what yesterday did for her and her self-confidence and self-belief. This was 
Not necessarily an easy pass. Trusted herself. And once she got free and clear of Lee Soyun, the race was hers. So Gong Lee on to the semifinals, waiting for the official results. Lee Soyun will go through. And the 132-120 for Ami Harai of Japan. She got it for third. That will not be good enough. So the only third place advancer to the semifinals is So Wee Min out of the opening quarter. That is because of the advancement of Zhang Yi's via penalty in the third quarter final. So there are the results. And so we have now our semifinal contenders set. And there they are. So Kim Gilly, Kristen Santos Griswold. Two from the US, three from Korea. Should be a terrific semi-final set of races as now the men will get out there for the first of four heats in their quarterfinals. They've whittled it down now to 25 skaters. Same as the women, first and second will automatically move through and a maximum of two thirds to the semi-finals. And there is William D'Angelo, Young Canadian, there is one of the rock stars of our sport, Liu Shaolin, now representing China. Three-time Olympian, Lee Wen Long, also from China. The Olympic silver medals in the thousand on this ice a couple of years ago. So two from China here in the opening quarter final. Nathan Thomas, Niall Tracy of Great Britain, and Wang Dai Hoon, the Olympic champion in the 1500. So this is a high quality race in the quarter finals. laps and D'Angelo sets the early pace but now Lee Wenlong speeds ahead and Liu Shaolin is down along with Nathan Thomas that will be reviewed but one of the stars in this quarter final is down and it's Lee Wenlong there's D'Angelo just the easy blow by Niall Tracy third Wang Dehu in fourth Taking a look at a potential penalty involving Thomas against Liu Shaolin. Approaching the last two laps, William D'Angelo of Canada. A big gap, and now Niall Tracy gets kind of bumped out of there by Wang Dae-hoon, and it's D'Angelo's race to finish off. We'll navigate one more corner. They'll take a look, I imagine, at the pass by Wang Dae-hoon as well. They kind of nudge Niall Tracy out of qualifying position, but D'Angelo stayed ahead of it all. Both the crash and the other little nibble. And William D'Angelo will safely move through. Now the question is, Dayahoon, who finished second, will, will Wong stay there? Will he draw a penalty? And could we see even Liu Shaolin moved on because of that crash very early in the race? Nathan Thomas kept Helmet number 69 right there as Lou took a look. And as Thomas kind of bore in on him, boy, I tell you what, when he's on the ice, there's generally a pretty, a pretty physical amount of action. So they were taking a look at both of those. And here's the other bit of contact. A little bit later on in the race, inside the final couple of laps. Niall Tracy swinging wide. He got kind of pushed a little bit further wide on somewhat of a questionable move by Wang Dae-ho, and they're taking a look at that as well. Here's Dan Geno, who's had a breakout season for Canada. First individual podium came in a World Cup one in Montreal, took bronze in the 1,000. Then the next week, silver in the 500, but he claimed his first gold World Cup medal that same weekend in the 1500. I mean, he's, he's on a roll. We talked a bit earlier on what confidence can do for you once you sniff a podium. And now picking up a win, Dan Geno, and he's not slowed down at all.
So have not get any, gotten any clearance so far of each of these two incidents. And again, they're looking at a potential penalty against Nathan Thomas of Poland against Lu Shaolin. And the other one, a potential penalty against Wang Dai Hoon against Niall Tracy. And there's Lu Shaolin, his facial expression as he sits down in the holding area. It doesn't really disclose what he may be thinking here. But he never really had a chance to get involved in that race. The contact happened so early. And here is another look. We see Michelle Dumont in the upper left-hand corner, that little inset box, pan in his hand, writing down some notes, and oftentimes that means a penalty is forthcoming. Now, is it going to be the incident involving Nathan Thomas, or will it be Wang Dae Hoon, or both? And then if there is a penalty on Thomas, is it at the juncture of the race? I mean, he doesn't know. <laughs> that's, that's about as honest of a reaction as you can get from Lou Shaolin. He, he doesn't know what's happening. But if there is a penalty on Thomas, is it at a stage of the race where Lou Shaolin would get advanced? Because at, at the look of those replays, it appeared they're kind of battling for third position. Let all the officials sort it out. But this is a, a fairly lengthy delay. But Dan Jano can cockily throw on his warm-up jacket, put the sneakers on, and say, you know what, I'm I'm good. I'll see you guys in a little bit. So again, here's the, the pass. And the contact from uh, Wang Dai Hoon against Niall Tracy. Right into this corner. That's what they're taking a look at as far as uh, Wang goes. And we're about to get the resolution here. And again, Banjo knows safely through, so adios for now. And still waiting to see the official results. But judging by the cheer of the crowd, there may be an advancement of Lu Shaolin here. We'll see. And we're waiting just like you. And no, Lu Shaolin is on the clock. Lee Wen Long will get through. Niall Tracy has been advanced as both Wang Dae Hoon and Nathan Thomas are assessed penalties. So Wen Long is through. And, and now Lu Shaolin is on the clock of time. So here's a look at what they determine. This is the penalty against Nathan Thomas. But again, with that penalty, they did not advance Lu Shaolin. And here is the other penalty that did advance Niall Tracy to the semifinals. Again, this is a battle for second place. And that is the reason why we'll see Niall Tracy move on. So the penalty on Wang Dae Hoon, the penalty on Nathan Thomas. And that was an eventful opening quarter for the men. Now to the second quarter final, Liu Xiaowang, younger brother of Liu Xiaolin, hoping for a little less eventful quarter final here. There's a look at Liu Xiaowang, Olympic gold medalist on this ice in the 500. Inside position for Liu. And there's Roberts Kruzbergs, the veteran from Latvia. So the race to the first corner. And Lou will easily take it. Nertilek Kazgali from Kazakhstan. Then Nick Sepchal from the Czech Republic. Kruzbergs from Latvia. Let's see his Wolfgang from Austria and Paul Adamski from Poland who came through not only the repage, but it was a penalty that advanced him back into the main draw. So those are the six in the second quarter. Six skaters for this pair and now taking the lead. Lou comfortably in second. Galleys, Sedgball, Adamski, Wolfgang. And right now the rabbit is Kruzberg's. 
And here's the first attempt. Crowd will tell you if it's successful for Liu Xiaowang, and it is. The overall world champ back-to-back -back years in 21 and 22 earned gold in the first World Cup 500. There's the first spill out of this race as both Cruzbergs and Kazgali go down. That will be reviewed. Cruzbergs was in qualifying position, but it frees up a big gap. And Liu Xiaowang can walk this one home. Sedgepal of the Czech Republic finishing second. Adamski 127.95 finishing third. So we'll have another bit of a delay as they take a look at the crash about the final third of that race. They'll take a maximum of two third place finishers, but that was before the advancement in the opening race that sent Tracy through to the semifinals. So it's gonna be a maximum now of one third place finisher. And that is currently Lou Shaolin, but that time will never stand because Shaolin again crashed out and he got back up and he finished the race about a, about a minute and 16 seconds after Niall Tracy did. So a hopeless situation for Liu Shaolin. So whoever is declared third, if it is by time and not by advancement, will be on the bubble. Well, Liu Shaowang takes care of business and we'll see him a little bit later on in the semifinals. One more look at the the review that is currently ongoing. It's right there involving Gazgali of Kazakhstan and Roberts Cruzberg. Try to make an inside pass. Was position established? Let's see. Kazakhstan anxiously awaiting the verdict here. Kazgali kind of get the sense he doesn't really want to look. <laughs> because right now he seems to be the target of the potential penalty. And we're about to get the results and it will be a penalty against Kazgali and Cruzbergs will advance. So Cruzberg gets pushed through to the semifinals. So a reprieve for Cruzbergs. Let's take a look at what they saw. It was the, the late pass attempt. It was deemed to be illegal. So we'll get three skaters out of this second quarter final moving through just like we did the first. So that will effectively eliminate any potential third place finishers by time. Which now might change the approach of the skaters as we head into the final two quarterfinals because he will have to make that extra move to get top two. He's all these skaters, including Park Ji Wan, they've, they've seen what has taken place over the last 10 minutes or so. This is a, a quality race. We'll see seven on the ice. Park ji the top skater at the 1,000-meter level, inside position, but beaten to the first quarter. We'll see Pascal Dion has been one of the top 1,000-meter skaters over the last few years. Tim Boer of the Netherlands, along with his teammate Jens Van Twoots, Yui Matsu Bayashi, Ward Petre, and Shuda Matsuzu of Japan. Those are the seven. This is pretty high quality for quarterfinal. So the depth is there, and now 
third place is not an option to move on to the semis. The own two-time Olympic medalist, both in relays for Canada, including part of the gold medal relay 5,000 team for Canada here back in 2022. He right now is sitting fourth. Park Jiwon still setting the pace. Boer and Van Schwoot right behind him. Inside two laps to go. Not a lot has happened yet. Park Jiwon is a quick check behind him at Boer. Here's the bell and here's the action. Boer and Van Schwoot. Van Schwoot right now third. Swerves in, gets past his teammate. Boer spins out. And it's Park Jiwon and he ends Van Schwoot. And Dion finishes third unofficially. Looked like a pretty good pass right there by Van, Van Schwoetz. There's a pretty content race by all seven skaters up until the final lap and a half. And then really the only move that was of significance was, was this one right here. And it was a, certainly a clean pass by Jens Van Schwoot and this little stumble on his own that takes Boer into the pads. So this looks certainly to be a no call. And Park Jiwad and Jens Van Schwoot look to move through. And there's the photo finish. Parked by about 26 thousandths of a second. So one more quarterfinal to go. And the results from the third heat, there they are. And now into the final quarterfinal, six skaters on the ice. And a really intriguing skater is going to be inside position here from Italy. That's Lucas Beckenhauser. I mean, he has been a, a curious guy to watch in races like these. I mean, a lot of firepower toward the end of races. Closing speed is there. Love his strategy. He's daring. Let's see how he fares. An Olympian from Italy. He's been on the podium once so far this year, back in World Cup 1. Silver in this 1,000. As a matter of fact, in this race, he is the only podium medalist individually so far this World Cup season. Michael Nowinski, a 20-year-old from Poland, world junior gold medalist in the 500 a year ago. Maxime Laoun of Canada, Shavakana of Kazakhstan, Antonioli of Italy, and Aung Sun Wu out of the repechage up into the quarterfinals for Korea. So he's already had a day. And there is Zhang right now out in front. But Speckenhauser back toward the back of the pack. Right now sitting fifth. That's that's a fairly common spot for him. But if he's a thoroughbred horser, uh, there's a little collision, and that'll knock one into the boards. But Speckenhauser is a guy who can close with a flourish. We'll watch him in helmet 37. Laoun was the one knocked out about a lap and a half ago. Still Zhang, Shalakano second. Speckenhauser now inches up to third and now goes for the outside pass into second. And there's the bell. Yang and Speckenhauser now in front. Yang trying to hold on to second. Antonioli looks for a, a lane to pass, approaching the line. Very close. Looked like Yang held on. Speckenhauser gets there. And I think Yang Sun Wu stayed up for second. And again, it matters because there will be no third place advancements by time, thanks to a couple of penalty advancements in the first three quarters. So there's the connection there involving Laoun and Michael Nowinski. It spills out Laoun there. And here is the Speckenhauser pass. And 
Zhang did well to at least fortify second position after the pass by Speckenhauser. Because Antonioli was making a stern move as well. And there you see how close it was, but it still will be Shang Sun Wu. But there is a video review still ongoing involving a potential penalty against Nowinski against Maxime Laoun that has not yet been resolved for a potential late pass. Here's what they're looking at. Nowinski in the 59 helmet. Comes tight inside. Takes the inside of Laoun out. And almost judging by that reaction, by Nowinski after he made contact. I think he realizes he's on the lurch. And the results are in, and Nowinski does indeed get a penalty, and Laun will be advanced. So Speckenhauser, along with Zhang Sun Wu, are through, and there's Nowinski kind of discussing things with his competitors. So Laun will get advanced as well. We'll see three advancements out of the four quarterfinals. Niall Tracy out of the first quarterfinal, Cruzberg's from the second, and now we'll see Maxime Laun of Canada also move through. So it'll be a little bit longer list in terms of the qualifiers for the semifinals. You see Dan Geno, Lu Xiaowang, Park Ji Wan, Speckenhauser, and there is the other one, Maxime Laun advancing via penalties. So that's it for the quarterfinals for the men on the 1,000. And now ready for the women's quarterfinals as we move to the second running of the 500. The men's 500 quarters will follow. Four heats, 20 total skaters. They'll take the top two and a maximum of two to the semifinals. And a look there at the 18-year-old Wang Yi. Park Ji Wan. Wang Yi just yesterday in the first running of the 500 earned a bronze. So she's on a high. Martina Valsapini, the four-time Olympian from Italy. She's in the blue suit right in the middle of your screen. Nicola Mazur, the Olympian from Poland. Those are the five. Wang and Park 1-2, Val Sapina, who's finished on the podium twice already this World Cup season, stumbled a bit, fell back, one skater drops out, and there's the bell. And it's Wang Yi and Park Juan. We'll have a couple of reviews, Wang Yi and Park Juan will cross 1-2. Val Sapina third, Mazur fourth, and Park Jiun crashed out earlier on the race. But two reviews. And one of them will be a potential infraction against Val Sapina, against one of the two Korean skaters. And it looks like the others were getting a notification in real time from Beijing from the referee's liaison. Looks like they're also taking a look at maybe another incident involving Val Sapina of Italy. So Val Sapina, who in the first two World Cup events in Montreal, finished bronze in the 500s. Finished bronze to Velsibor and Poutsma the opening week, and then finished bronze to Doak and Poutsma the next week in Montreal. Looks like her endeavor to try to reach another A final in the 500 is likely coming to an end. Now the first incident involving Val Sapina has been cleared away with no penalty. They have not yet cleared the second. Now it looks like you're taking a look at a potential infraction involving Nikola Mazur of Poland against one of the two Korean skaters. But Wang Yi, confident. She'll move through to the semifinals. Always a great feeling. You win the race, no issues involving you. So you can hang out, delace, take the skates off, and. Just chill out while they figure things out. This won't take long, and no penalty assessed. And Wang and Park ji will move through, getting a maximum of two third-place finishers 
We'll move on to the semifinals. Star list for the second quarter final. Hannah Desmet, who's been on the World Cup podium this year already three times, but two of them in the 1500, the other in the 1000. There is Wang Jinran. Her best individual finish is fifth in a World Cup event. Ariana Siegel, Mariah Nakashima, Jim Suki, those are the five. Second position for Shim. She will defend coming out of that first quarter. And Hannah Smet will set the pace. Shim Suki, Olympic silver medalist in Sochi in 2014. Represented Korea in Pyeongchang as well four years later. Back getting close to the form we saw several years ago. Wang drafting off of Shim Suk Hee. There's the bell. Final lap. Top two on to the semifinals. Shim Suk Hee still second. She feels the breath of Wang, but she will hang on and finish second. A wire to wire win for Hannah Desmets. You're just trying to grab a spot in the semifinals. Doesn't need to be pretty. We've seen Shim Suk Hee skate better at this distance, but. Did all she needed to do. Top two finish. And we'll see Shim Suki and Hannah Desmet on the semifinals a bit later on today. Met. Good sportsmanship there by Wang Jinrens and you off the ice first. And right now Wang is on the time bubble, 42-982. Two more quarterfinal heats here in the women's 500. And this should be a good one as well. Both of Elzebor's sisters are in this race. There's a look at Zandra. Claim gold in the first World Cup in Montreal in the 500. She's been on the podium again this weekend. Bronze in the 15. There's Ricky Doak, who right now is the top-ranked skater at this classification this year. Took gold in Montreal in the second World Cup. Felsborg's younger sister, Michelle, in third position. Renee Stinge of Canada. And Volkovitskaya from Kazakhstan out of the repechage in outside position here. So Xander Velzebor holds serve around that opening corner. And here we go. Doak, Michelle Velzebor right now second and third. And Velzebor opening up a very sizable lead in this 500 race for the first half. We'll see what Doak has in the tank, or will she have an effort? She might simply try to play defense with Michelle Velzebor right behind her. So here's the bell. Xander Velzebor is still in front, and Doak defending in second. And Michelle Velzebor gets the pass as Doak crashes out out of that first corner. And the Velzebor sisters are going to move through. Oh, a tough break for Ricky Doak. And a little extra smile there for Xandra Velsbor. She's not sure who's behind her. She went wire to wire, but very pleased to take a look over her shoulder and see her sister, the first one up against her shoulder. And Ricky Doak was in qualifying position, but as she came out of that first corner in the last lap, it looked like she maybe lost her focus and slipped out, and that opened up the gate for Michelle. And this is that last lap opening corner. Just on the crossover there. Doak lost control. And down, a little wobble, couldn't maintain. And that was the end of Ricky Doak's effort. So 
And there's the crossing line for Xander and Villasabor and her sister right behind her, as she is now. And they will not know it's hit side by side. We get the official results in the third quarter final. 44-09-4 for Steen. And she right now is sitting on the cusp of advancing to the semifinal, but all depends on how this last quarter plays out. And there's some speed here as well. Selma Poutsma, who has been a silver medalist in two World Cup 500 events, both in Montreal. There's a look at Poutsma. Courtney Soro of Canada. Fon Kachin, five-time world champ in the 500. Julie Latai of the U.S. And Oriol Levesque from France. This is the last quarter final. Poutsma, high quality, trying to join both Belzebor sisters from the Netherlands in the semifinals. And off to a good start. Von Kachin second, Sero third, then Julie Latai of the U.S. in fourth, followed by Levesque. Lap and a half to go, Poutsma. And here's Von Kachin. Maybe not necessarily making a move with the lead, but at least gapping away from Soro and Latai. Final corner, Soro making a hard push, but will not get there. It'll be Poutsma and Fon Kashin. So the Dutch will have three into the semifinals. And Fon Kashin had a very nice weekend. Silver yesterday in the first running of the 500. Fon now 30 years of age, silver medalist in Sochi in the 1,000, but she was the big favorite in Sochi to win gold in the 500. Did not work out, but she has been, really over the last decade or so, up until the last couple of years, one of the premier sprinters on the women's side in short track. And maybe buoyed by skating on a home ice this weekend. It's almost a little renaissance Fon Kashin this weekend. We'll see how she fares later on today. Just waiting on the official results. And we'll see if Soro's time is good enough to get through, and it will. See the small Q, 42.759 for Soro. So she and Wang Jinran will get through via time. And we see Park Ji-won, Shim Suki from Korea, three from China, Wang Fan and Wang, and three from the Netherlands. And that will be the group that will head to the semifinals a bit later today. So now on to the men's 500 quarters, down to 21 skaters, four heats we'll see. First and second AQ in the semifinals and a max of two third place times. And in this opening quarter final, there is a look at Soon Long, the 23-year-old Olympian for China. World Junior Champion three years ago in the 1,000. Marina Bearsons, the Olympian from Latvia. There's Lin Zhaojun, bronze medalist in the 500 in the second World Cup event in Montreal a few weeks ago, Pietro Siegel. And Gleb Ivchenko from Kazakhstan. Those are the five. Sprint to the corner. And Sun Long made a good move, as did Lin Zhaojun. So China right now occupies the top two going into the first full lap. And they are in prime position right now. Bearsen lost the inside position on the start. And he's on the chase. Siegel tries for the inside pass, and he will get there. He's up in a third. Still Lin and Sun as we approach the belt. China right now, 1-2. They would both advance to the semis if this will hold, and it will. Lin and Sun, 1-2. Much to the delight of the fans here in Beijing. It was all the start. 
Especially an outstanding start from Soon Long. I mean, he's in the fourth position right there, second from the top. The fact that he was able to race out and even get the end of that first corner ahead of Bearsons, I mean, that was crucial for him. And you can tell, look at him kind of grit his teeth, exploding. And just followed right on the draft of Lin Zhao Jun. I mean, that made all the difference for Soon Long. I mean, if he doesn't get up in a second spot coming out of the first corner, he may not advance at all. Now, that put us a lot of pressure on Bearsons. Who wound up finishing fourth. So Lin Zhao Jun, Soon Long, out of the semis. So the official results, Seagal 47-21 his time. And again, we'll take the maximum of the two fastest thirds to the semis. Second quarter final, there's the list. Hausman and Delat from the Netherlands, Jordan Pierre Gillet, gold medalist in the second World Cup in Montreal in the 500. And one again yesterday in the first running here. So he is on a tear. And there's last year's top-ranked 500 skater, Dennis DeKeisha. So will the magic for Pierre Gillet continue? Could he potentially go back-to-back -back and sweep the 500s this weekend? That's the goal. So Yirab Korea rounds out the five. Nikisha right now back in the pack. That is not where you want to be in a 500 race. But he sweeps past a couple on that corner. Still Pierre Gillet and Hausman. There's the bell. Nikisha third. Trying to target Hausman. Or at least stay close enough with a tight time. But he's going for the pass. He was unable to make it. He spins out. And Pierre Gillet and Hausman will finish 1-2. So the dream of a 500 sweep for Pierre Gillet is still alive. And you kind of wonder about that last attempt from Dennis Nikisha. It has not been a terrific World Cup season for him, especially at this event with what he did last year. But you almost feel like, was that attempted pass necessary? Maybe that internal clock, maybe he knew that his third place time wasn't likely going to be good enough with a couple of races yet to go. Well, that was a, a daring, risky move right here, trying to get up in a second. Going into that final corner. But the gamble did not pay off for Nikisha. Down he went. And Hausman will join Pierre Gillet in the semifinals. And will Nikisha's third place time, had he not efforted toward that pass, would it have been good enough? We'll never know. But again, they are making decisions, split second decisions on thin blades, 40 miles an hour, do I, don't I? A lot of things to process. So the results, Nikisha didn't finish. 48-6-7 for Soyi Rob. Third quarter. Six skaters, including Kim Gun Woo. Kim Gun Woo, the overall number one skater, but he had to come out of the repage, as did Renzi Wei right there. Felix Rousse of Canada inside position. Quentin Faircoat earned silver yesterday in the first run of the 500. He's in the red, white, and blue. Vertical stripes in second position. There's say Zaksavai of Kazakhstan, Lukas Kaczynski from Poland. This is not necessarily Kim Gun Woo's best distance. We'll see how he handles it. Right now he's at the back of the pack. Still Roussel. Faircock. And down goes Kaczynski. The bell lap, and now a couple of other skaters go down. And it's Roussel and Faircoke who stayed away from the action. They'll finish 1-2. Renzi Wei third, Kim Gun Woo on that second fracas one that went down with Zach Zibayev. 
And Felix Rousseau will move on. He will join Pierre Gillet in the semifinals. Uh, just a, a tough mission for both Ren Zue and Kim Gun Woo to come out of the repage to 500. Kim Gun Woo, I mean, you don't want to be in that number five starting position at a 500. And he did his best. Didn't get off to a great start as you saw right there. And that's what dropped him all the way to the back of the pack. And you're, you're needing a lot of good fortune to come from where Kim Gun Woo was to get in a position to even make a move to finish top two. There's the stumble and the spill by Kaczynski. And the ice maybe a little bit chewed up now. We've seen a lot of races without any resurfacing since we came back for this afternoon session. They will resurface at the end of these 500 quarters for the men. And there's the second crash out. And Felix Roussel, a 22 year old, easing through along with Faircook. So one last quarter final here in the 500. And then we'll have the semifinals set. We'll have the semifinals a bit later this afternoon. But on the other side of the resurfacing following this last race coming up, there'll be the semifinals of the women's and men's 1,000 before we get to the semis of the 500. This is what they're taking a look at before the results become official. And nothing yet posted. <laughs> Why not? Let's go. Kim Gun Woo has things to do. <laughs> And a penalty on Kim Gun Woo. He is unhappy with the penalty assess. It wouldn't have mattered. No advancements as a result, but penalty to Kim Gun Woo. Right now, the Crystal Globe leader coming into this third World Cup. And there's the penalty on Kim Gun Woo. And then just later, Kim Gun Woo gets taken out anyway. Lineup for the last quarter final. Steven Dubois been on a World Cup podium twice already this year. Once in the 1,000. Bronze in the 1,500. Stan DeSmet to Belgium. There's a look at Dubois. Brennan Corey, Lee Jung Min, Nico Anderman. The five here in the very last quarter final, the 500. And Dubois easily claims the lead inside position out of that first quarter. Brendan Corey right now third. A nice gap between Dubois and Desmet, and then from Desmet to Corey. This is the last quarter final. They'll take the two fastest thirds if there's no penalty advancement. And right now on the on the bubble. It's 48-6-7 for So Yira. It's going to be Dubois and Desmets. And Corey with that time, he's going to sneak in. 40.67 to Dubois and Desmet. Finish 1-2. A good blast of the finish by Corey. And that is going to knock So Yira out of the semifinals. Starting these 500 just ultra important. And when you give Dubois inside position, he is very tough to beat into that opening quarter. And turn this race into a pretty straightforward effort for him. Nice finish at the end by Corey, and that mattered. When you're talking thousands of a second, keeping you or sending you on to the next round, 
That finish, that stretch by Brennan Corey mattered. And here are the official results. As the 500 quarterfinals for the men comes to a close, Stephen Dubois and the Smets are coming through. And there is the qualifying time of 40.642 for Brennan Corey, so he's on to the semis as well. As the pads open up, the Zamboni is on the ice. They'll smooth out all of the tracks, all the choppy ice. And a look at the semifinalists. Siegel and Corey are through by time. Three from Canada, two from China. And Faircoke already with a podium finish this weekend here in Beijing. He's on again. And we'll see if Pierre Gillet can sweep the 500s. He'll have a shot in the semifinals a bit later on. We'll come back in about 12 minutes time with the men's and women's semifinals of the thousand. Women's World Cup Beijing wraps up on this final day. Stick around. OK,現場的各位觀眾,大家下午好,歡迎各位來到2023至2024賽季國際華聯短道速滑世界盃北京站的比賽現場。誒,那麼前兩個比賽日,如果有來到現場的BB,一定會知道,如果我出現,就代表
底是多少呢？后面呢？我听到好多声音啊，可以大点声的告诉他哦。三十九秒五零五，对吧？哎，恭喜我们这位冰冰非常厉害哦，答对了我们第一题。那么我们第一个礼物就将送给你，来，掌声鼓励一下。OK， 接下来到我们第二题，还没有想参与的呢，来举手，我看一下好吗？哪里哪里哪里 ？OK， 我就往上来了。好，这一位来请起立一下。OK， 我们的第二题哦，请听题：本赛季截止到前两站，中国队在哪个项目上排名第一位？哎，这个要好好考虑一下哦，也可以求助一下你身旁的各位哦。哎，马上就去求助了哦！好，来，我们来听一下，你认为的正确答案是？接力。呃，哪个接力呢？我觉得我要向后移动了，好吗？来来来来来，大点声说一下。我接两千米。你们觉得对吗？没错，恭喜你，来吧，起立一下，好吗？掌声送给我们这位观众，礼物送给你，在那里。啊，不要着急拍照，不要着急拍照，好吗？其实这个礼物更珍贵，好吗<笑> ？OK OK， 好，还有最后一题，还有没有想要礼物的？最后一题喽，最后一题，最后一题在哪里？在哪里？来，这位身穿绿色衣服的美女，来，请来到我的身边，好吧？来，过来，过来，到这边，到这边，好吗？来。哦，他上来的时候说了一句：“姐妹们，靠你们了。”哎，这是什么、oh, ？OK， 这个没问题。中国队加油！这个横幅一打出来，应该有尖叫声，对吧？哎，那么也希望你能够回答对我们的问题，好吗？那么这道题，我觉得也是比较简单的，好吗？题面是二零二三至二零二四赛季国际华联短道速滑世界杯，一共有几站？这个应该很简单的哦，要关注我们世界杯的都应该知道，一共有几站？六站。六站，没错，掌声送给大家鼓励一下，好吗？哎，来吧，这份礼物送给你。我觉得这个呼声，你不用这么去喊，你应该这样去喊。准备好，三二一，中国。出了我们所有人的呼声啊！也希望我们的队员可以创造出更好的成绩，好吧？再次掌声，恭喜他一下 ！OK， 那么现场的各位，你们还想要福利吗？想要的话。
And back to the Capital Indoor State in Beijing. Final session of the last day of World Cup Beijing. It's winding down. And we jump now into the real meaty events. Semi-finals will begin for the women's thousand. Tristan Santos Griswold, one of two Americans in the semi-finals. And she'll be the favorite in her heat to reach yet another A final. And who knows, maybe a couple of individual gold medals for Santos Griswold this weekend in Beijing. And what a feather in her cap that would be to what has been an outstanding start to this short track season for her. But first things first, get through the semis. Two semifinal races. They'll take first and second plus a maximum of one. And there is Brunel, the teenager from Canada. And she'll have something to say about it as well, but she'll start from position five. Santos Griswold and the five helmet, Claudia Gagnon of Canada, Gong Li, Zhang Yi is from China, and Brunel. Those are the five on the ice in this opening semifinal. So Zhang Yi is getting advanced via a penalty coming out of the quarterfinals. Gong Li claimed the automatic spot out of her heat in the quarterfinals. Santos Griswold has had really no trouble at all so far over the course of this weekend, dominating in her 500 gold medal win yesterday in the first running of that 500. You know, biding her time in between Zhang and Gong. Brunel right now at the back of the pack. Gagnon fourth. And now Santos Griswold taps the gas, and there she goes. Flying around Zhang, gets the easy pass. And now the race belongs to Santos Griswold. Coming up on the bell lap. Again, the top two to the A final. Santos Griswold, both arms clasped behind her back in, in charge. Gong Li, a tight second big gap to Zhang. And Tristan Santos Griswold back in an A final. Gong Lee about nine hundredths of a second behind. And when Santos Griswold wants to go, she goes and knows her competition and knows when the right time is. And we have really not seen her make any major mistakes over the course of this World Cup season for the 29-year-old American. There's the move by Santos Griswold with about, what, a lap and a half to go at that stage. Her timing's been impeccable. She's right in that category. We've talked about it quite a bit over the first three World Cup sessions, and even the four continents in the all a few weeks ago. You know, there are, are a handful of women skaters right now who when they want to command a race they can and they can do so basically at any time and santos griswold is in that very small group of skaters that include kim gilly santos griswold through to an a final speaking of kim gilly here she is in the second semi And Kim Gillied, a World Cup gold in the 1,000, a World Cup gold in the 1,500, a World Cup gold this weekend also in the 1,500. Highly decorated right now, top skater in the world. Inside position, helmet four. So off we go, Gilly. Along with Lee Soyeon of Korea, Zhu Ali of China, Corey Stoddard of the U.S., and So We Min also from Korea. So We Min right now is the top-ranked skater at this specific distance, the 1,000. Overall, she's fifth. Stoddard second, and now shuffled back to third. And that is So We Min out of the head of the pack. And now Stoddard 
will make a move. And she will press on and try and take the lead away from So Wee Man, and she will. So Stoddard up to first, Zhua Li third, and Kim Gilly fourth. Watch her with intent. Because again, when she declares she's ready to make a move, she's like a rocket. And it's that time for Kim Gilly. This move started with her in fourth. She swings now four wide near the pad. Still trying to make the move to get around Zhu, and she will. Now Stoddard is the only skater in front of her. This will get tight though. Kim Gilly is being forced to work a bit. She's in second. Look at that smooth move to get inside Stoddard. And Kim Gilly with the bell in her ears in front. Stoddard second. Zhu Ali crashed out. And here comes Kim, here comes Stoddard. And the United States will have two in the A final. So Kim Gilly and Stoddard of the U.S. will move on to an A final. We talked about that earlier in the event today about Corey Stoddard, kind of on the verge of consistent semifinal appearances and maybe more than occasional A final for Stoddard. Well, she's in an A final coming up later today in the thousand. And that is big news for her. And a great opportunity in what will be a tremendously talented field. Stoddard is 22 years of age. Her best individual finish in a World Cup. She's been on a podium twice individually. Once in Montreal earlier this year. That came in World Cup one, finished bronze in the 1500. She reached the bronze podium in Almaty last season in the 1000. But never a higher individually, she'll have a shot racing for gold coming up later on today. So there is the Lee Soyun by time will also move through. So Gilly, Stoddard, and Lee will join Zhang and Santos Griswold later today in the A final. And the bottom five of that graphic to the B final, including Brunel and Gagnon of Canada and Zhu and Zhang from China. So that's it for the women's semis in the thousand. Now on to the men's thousand semifinals. And we will have 11 skaters, six in this opening semifinal because of what extra advancement coming out of the quarters. Lucas Speckenhauser will be in inside position. Park Ji Wan in this race. Maxime Laoun was advanced out of the last quarter. Lee Wen Long. Sedge Paul and Roberts Cruzbergs. Cruzbergs was also advanced via penalty. So away we go in the first semifinal of the men's thousand. And Laoon, who was gifted a spot in this semifinal by penalty, not wasted any time. Goes from sixth position out front early in this thousand. Cruzberg's third, Park Jiwan now sets the pace. But again, we've we've warned you about Lucas Beckenhauser in the in the blue suit right now, fourth. And he is a guy who has strong late life on the ice as far as passes and closing ability. We've seen Laun, we've seen Park, and now we see Cruzberg's on one stage or another here in the thousand out in the lead. And now Laun up to third. Park will reclaim the lead. Laun an inside pass attempt. Oh, a lot of traffic there. And Laun lost his balance. That will be reviewed, but Laun is all the way at the back of the pack. Park Ji Wan in front. Lee Wen Long of China suddenly into second. There's the bell. Cruzberg's third. And here comes Speckenhauser with that patented late move. It'll get him to third and no higher. Park Ji Wan, Lee Wen Long, 1 2. But a couple of reviews are forthcoming. And they're taking a look at a potential penalty involving Park Ji Wan against Lee Wen Long earlier in the race. And 
then they're going to take a look at a possible penalty against Lee Wen Long against Park Ji Wan later in the race. So the same two skaters involved and potential infraction against both of them. Now they're going to take a look at a potential penalty involving Speckenhauser. So we'll see, there's a lot going on here as far as the video reviews. And again, we're getting the best information in real time as we can from the referee liaison in Beijing. So there's Park Ji Wan to the finish line. Lee went long second. Little Subtle fist pump by Park Ji Wan. Trying to get back on top of the podium for the first time since the opening World Cup in Montreal about a month and a half ago when he claimed the thousand. Took silver in the 1500 the following week, and nothing yet this weekend for Park Ji Wan. Beckenhauser did get up for third, but you see the two yellow boxes. They're taking a look at a couple of potential incidents. And there you see Laun stumbling away with contact. He was trying to make a bold move from third up to first, entering a corner. And it was swerving right and left to try and find the adequate space. That's the move right there for Laon and Helmet 7. A little bump, maybe a little interference in front of Cruzbergs. Michel Dumont, chief referee, headset on. Over at the pads, taking a look at the video and in constant communication with people in the video replay booth. One more semifinal on the way. And if there is not an advancement due to penalty here, they will take a maximum of one fastest third. That matters for that guy right there, Lucas Beckenhauser, because he finished third in this race. But if there's a penalty advancement that does not involve Luca, this 1,000-meter chase will be over. So again, they're taking a, a close look right here at a potential penalty. Looks like, from what I am reading, that this potential penalty on loan has been cleared away as a result of shared responsibility involving Cruzbergs. And the other potential penalty involving Speckenhauser has also evidently been cleared. So it looks like the results will stand, which means Speckenhauser will finish third. And we'll see if his time will hold up with one more semifinal to go. And that's not necessarily good news for Maxime Laun, or Cruzbergs for that matter. So again, to see the green box on the second potential penalty, that has been clear. That was involving Speckenhauser and Cruzbergs. And there you see the official results, so no penalties anywhere. Speckenhauser's 124, 570 is on the bubble. Park Ji Wan, Lee Wenlong are through. So they're on to the A final, and here's the last semi final of the men's thousand. And we will see Liu Xiaowang now representing China. Olympic gold medalist in the 500. One more look. No penalty is the final resolution here. They did call this shared responsibility involving Cruzbergs and Laun. So no penalty applied against Laun, but again, Laun. Wound up finishing last. That bit of contact shook him off his moorings and no chance. So there's the lineup for the second semi. Liu Xiaoang will be in fourth position. Yens Van Chwoot, Jang Sun Wu of Korea, William D'Angelo. There's a look at Liu. 
And Niall Tracy of Great Britain. He was advanced as well out of the quarterfinals. He's at the top of your screen for Great Britain. And a real opportunity for Niall Tracy. It is rare to find a male short track speed skater from Great Britain in an A final. And he's going to have a shot here. Finishing top two, he'll get in. Or if his time gets inside Speckenhaus, he'll get in as well. He's efforting hard at the top of the screen. And there is Niall Tracy like a rocket out front. Angelo and Lou, second and third. Van Schwoots right now at the back of the pack. You've seen some remarkable improvement from Niall Tracy year over year. And he was close to reaching an A final a few weeks ago in Montreal. D'Angelo right now in front. Tracy a tight seconds. But you know, it's just a matter of time before Liu Xiaoang makes a big move here. Three and a half laps left. And here is Liu just gliding to the wide side of Tracy. Now he cuts in, and he will beat Tracy to the corner. Liu is now in second. D'Angelo and Liu, one, two. Two laps remain. Tracy still third. And a gap now as D'Angelo building out his lead. There's the bell, and Lou will need to defend second position. Yang making a move. He gets around Tracy. Here comes Van Twoots on the inside. Lou trying to block him all off, and he will. D'Angelo claims it. Excellent defense left and right behind Lou Xiaoang. And he will move through to the A final. That was not easy for Lou Xiaoang. I mean, he was taking, he was taking flack from all angles. He fought hard to get up into second place, getting around Tracy, and then it all broke loose behind him, to the right of him and to the left. It was Van Chu to the inside, and it was Zhang Sung Wu to the outside, and somehow Lu Xiaowang was able to kind of block it all off. And the battle for third right there. I'm not sure who took that down. And again, we'll see, taking a look at time and see how that matters. But we do know that D'Angelo is through again to another A final. And again, the time out of that first semi of Speckenhauser, who finished third, was 124.570. They had not yet posted the results here. We're still trying to figure out who finished third in that race and then what their time was. Good. Angelou and Lu Xiaowang into the A final. And Van Chwoot did get up for, actually it was a dead heat for third. That is unusual and they both will move on to the A final. How about that? 124, 346. That time is better than Speckenhauser, so he's in the B final. But we will have six in the A final because of a dead heat for third between Yen Van Twoots and Jang Sun Wu. How about that? You think you've seen it all in a sport decided by thousands of a second, a tie. And we'll see six coming up in the A final later today. And four out of that semifinal alone. So that's it for the men's thousand semifinals. The A final is now set. And now just a little quick ice repair. No resurfacing yet because we're jumping straight in to the semifinals of the women's 500. And in this opening semifinal, three of the five from China. Fan Kishin inside position. Wang Zhenran, Wang Yi. Shim Suki and it is Smet, the other two. First and second, at a max of one third, unless there's a dead heat. So the race is on. And Von Kashin, the veteran, 30 years of age, five time world champ in the 500, maintains the lead through the first lap and a half. Desmet up for second. And Wang now up to second. China right now, one, two, three, as Desmet juggled back to fourth. Here's the bell. 
China, one, two, and three at this stage. They have a shot here with a quality third place time. They might get all three into the A final. Fan, Wang, and Wang, one, two, three. And Wang Yi finishing third. We'll check the official full time. Well, that is a picture perfect finish in front of the home crowd. So Fan Kashin continues a bit of a resurgence here in Beijing this weekend. Already on the podium once yesterday, finishing silver position behind Santos Griswold of the U.S. in the 500. And she's back in another A final. You're the head coach of the Chinese national short track team. So let's go out there and three in the same semifinal. Let's just finish one, two, three and get the fastest third place time and get you all to the A final. How's that sound? Very well might happen. So we know that Von Kashin is through. Wang Jinran is through. So they're on to the A final. And right now, the only question, Wang Yi. So there's a very content Von Kashin. But it's good to see a smile on her face. And skating very, very well. This is about the best we've seen her skate in a, in a couple of years. Still awaiting the results. Wang Yi right there without the helmet on, right in front of you. Hopeful that that time will be good enough for an A final. Wang Yi, just 18 years old. There is her time, 43-477. So right now she would be in, but we'll see how this second semi plays out. And we'll see a couple of real burners with Selma Poutsma and Xander Velzebor. Courtney Soro of Canada, Michelle Velzebor, and Park Jiwon of Korea. So there is Xander Velzebor. One of the top 500 skaters in the world. Three from the Netherlands. And boy, Velsbor right now, she's pointing down to Soro where she's lying up. Maybe infringing on her territory, but she's getting the, the starter's attention. And now they'll back off the line for a moment. But Xander Velsbor was a bit uncomfortable right there. Now they're ready. Was that legit? Was that a little mental game played by Velsbor? And I, I tell you what, down goes the Canadian Soro, but they will halt the race. Yeah, that is a fortunate break for Courtney Soro in Canada. It looked like she went down in her own volition. And who knows? I mean, prior to that start, it looked like Sandra Vilsbor is kind of pointing down in the direction of the blades of Courtney Soro lined up next to her. And I don't know if it was intentional or what, but coming out of that first corner, it's a, a slip and a fall by Soro, but she's bailed out and will get a full restart. We'll analyze the blades. Here's Michelle Velsebor, Sandra's younger sister as they both race for a shot in the A final. So we saw all three from China in the opening semifinal. Two got in in the A final. The other one is right now on the bubble to get in by time. And now we have three from the Netherlands in the second semifinal. And all five return to the line. Soro looking for a cleaner start, and now more contact, and Michelle Vilsabor goes down. It looked like Soro was about to kind of yield the space and settle for a fifth-place start going in that first corner, and might have just kind of ran up the back a little bit of Michelle Vilsabor. So another whistle to halt this race. But Soro in that third position, I mean, she was losing ground right there, and a little stumble by Michelle Vilsabor to her right. 
She went down and kind of interfered with Soro. And Michelle Dumont, the chief referee, ends that second attempt at starting this race. And one more examination of not only the equipment, but a little adjustment maybe on strategy. That's what Soro is over there talking with with her head coach about. The equipment is fine for Soro, but now it's just about, hey, how do you want me to get off the line here? And I don't want to concede ground, although it is a 1,000. He can maybe get away with that a little bit in, in this type of race. We saw an initial fall by Soro after a little bit of maybe a, a fine game, perhaps, by Xander Velsbor, hard to tell, but did seem to bother Soro on that first start. And now Soro is maybe a little gun shy, aggressively leaving the line. And fell behind Michelle Velsbor right there in the light purple helmet. Stumbled by Velsbor. That cost Soro again. So, yeah, capitalize with your coaching staff and talk strategy if you know your equipment's fine. But what's running through the head of Soro right now? The whistle brings the skaters back to the starting line for a third time. We'll see how aggressive the start is for Soro this time, right in the middle position. Gets off slow once again, and she'll enter that first corner last. And now two more skaters go down. Soro staying in her feet this time. But Jiwon Park and Michelle Velsimor crash outs. Will we ever see an A final today in the women's 500? Didn't look like a lot of contact there. It looked like Michelle Velsimor just kind of got out over the top of the blades a bit. And more than a chuckle from the fans here inside the Capitol Indoor Stadium. <laughs> so we will try to get this second semi underway for a fourth time. What's the record? Got to be closed in on it. This has been quite shaky. Probably more so for Michelle Velsibor now than anybody else. I mean, Soros had a couple of issues here or there, but these last couple of restarts are a result of some uh, wobbles and bobbles by Michelle Velsibor. Haven't talked really at all about Selma Pautzma, who is, there she is right there in Helmet 17. I mean, she's picked up the silver medal each of the first two World Cups in the 500 both in Montreal. I mean, she's getting a lot of a lot of practice, a lot of training on her starts from inside position here in this race. And we'll try to do it again here momentarily. <laughs> There's Michelle Dumont. So let me know when you're ready. For real this time. So again, we present to you the five skaters of the second semifinal in the women's 500. That graphic mostly accurate. Fourth restart. Actually, third restart plus the start. Don't be surprised if there's a big cheer if we get through this first corner. And we won't. We won't, of course we won't. And the laughter grows. And again, it's Michelle Velsibor and Park ji -won. They just cannot get out of each other's way. <laughs> the fans are laughing, the skaters aren't. They are quite annoyed. And Pautzma, for the fourth time, won the opening corner. Velsibor was right behind her. I mean, they're ready to race. And the last thing they wanted to hear again was another two to the whistle behind him to halt the race for a fourth time. 
I mean, there's just a determined effort by both Velzebor and Park Jiwon to defend position. Park's trying to get a rounder. is not allowing it, and clearly their skills are pretty even. Because we've seen this happen now three times in the last five minutes. And now we will get to our fourth restart and our fifth attempt at getting the semifinal off and running. If you need to go throw a steak on the grill and fire up the big green egg and throw the steak on the grill after it gets hot enough, by the time your steak is done cooking, we might have a result in this 500. And there's Park ji Wan walking off of the ice. And she evidently has been penalized and sent off. So now four remain for the fifth attempt to start this 500. And again to the first quarter. And the fans will applaud as the race finally gets out of the first quarter. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Pouncemo. And then the Bellsmore sisters, two and three. Soro is fourth. Top two to the A final. And again, the Wang Yi time of third place out of the first semi was 43-477. So that's going to be the target time likely for Michelle Bellsmore currently in third. There's the bell. Pouchma and Xander Bellsmore, one, two. Xander swings wide, will not try to make the pass, and Michelle Bellsmore finishes third in 42-8-6. That will be good enough to get Michelle Bellsmore into the A final. And the fans, I think, are just exhaustedly applauding as this second semifinal has finally come to a close. Golf claps from thousands. So just like in the opening semifinal when China finished one, two, three, the Dutch finished one, two, three in the second semifinal, but the Dutch will send the fastest third to the A final, and that will knock Wang Yi into the B final. So we will have two countries represented by five skaters in the 500 A final a little bit later on today. The Dutch will send three, and China, the host country, will send the other two. I'm exhausted too. And pretty thankful, to be honest. So it's not often the top two skaters in a heat are overshadowed by everybody else, but that was the case. Poutsma and Sandra Velsbor finish 1 2. And Michelle Velsbor will also move through. There's a look at Park Ji Wan, who is not allowed to continue after we. Had four restarts, and here is the explanation. The penalty was assessed against Park Jiwon. Outside to end, the lane change. After the fourth restart and the fifth attempt to get that 500 underway. So there are the contenders to the A final of the 500. Again, that'll come up within about the next hour or so. And now we'll get to the Two semifinals on the men's side of the 500. Then they will resurface the ice, and boy, they will need to, right, with all these races and especially all those restarts. So two semis, five skaters in each of the semi, and Jordan Pierre Gillet looking for a 500-meter sweep as they run this race twice. Inside position in the first semifinal. Lin Zhao Jun. Kai Hausman, Quentin Faircook, Pietro Siegel, those are the five. Determined start by Pierre Gillet. Hausman to second. Lin Zhao Jun right now third, spilling out. Faircook and Siegel are down. And it's a three skater race, and there goes Lin Zhao Jun. Up in a second, the bell rings for Pierre Gillet. Lin Zhao Jun takes a peek over the shoulder. He has Hausman beat as they head to the line. 
And Pierre Gillet will have an opportunity to go back to back in the same weekend at the same distance. A shot and a sweep for the Canadian. And Lin Zhao Jun is also through. We'll check the time for Kai Hausman. Again, they will take a maximum of one third place finisher. And you look ahead of the field in the second semifinal, you have Dubois, Roussel, Desmets, Soon Long. It's a quality field in that second semi. So we'll see if the time of Hausman will hold up. Feels good to finish a race with no restarts, doesn't it? There's the stretch. Now June does get there ahead of Hausman. So Jordan Pierre Gillet, this does not happen often. The potentiality of a skater to sweep the same event in a World Cup weekend, but he's going to have a chance. Pierre Gillet won the first run in the 500 yesterday. There are the results, 47-7-3 for Hausman. And out of the second semifinal, Steven Dubois, who anytime we've seen him in these sprints with the inside position, I mean, he has easily claimed the corner. Roussel, his teammate, will be next to him. Desmet in the middle. Brennan Corey from Australia. And Sun Long from China. And look at Dubois. Right now, the world overall number two. And Dubois, again, stopping forward. And again, easily claims the corner. So Dubois and Roussel right now, 1-2. Sun Long third. Then a little gap to this Met, bigger gap to Corey. Soon Long now up to second, two laps to go. And now big move, Roussel, and he takes down Soon Long with him, and DeSmet now in his second position. That will be reviewed. There's the bell. And it's Dubois and Stan DeSmet. Corey right now is third. We'll check his time. Dubois crosses the line. DeSmet second. Corey 41 plus. That won't be good enough. But they will review. The contact and the crash out that would have been in qualifying position. So, I mean, this could impact both of these semifinals. If there is an advancement due to a penalty, that would then also knock out Hausman as the fastest third. So there's a lot on the line here on this review. So taking a look at a penalty as Roussel comes up in the white helmet right there on a late pass against Soon Long. And if that is charged, then Soon Long would move on to the A final. How about Soon Long just kind of holding on like a jockey for dear life right there as they both crash hard into the pads. So Desmet. The beneficiary of that crash out, he's up to finish second, so he will move through along with Dubois. But so there's a better than good chance that we will see Soon Long advance through here. That is unofficial, of course. They're still taking a look. But the Zamboni's getting to work early, and there is the results, and we will see, in fact, Soon Long get advanced through. So the penalty on Roussel. Dubois and Desmet move through along with the advancement of Soon Long. There's a look at Roussel. Draws the penalty. Still in a cheery spirit. And the late pass illegal right here in the white helmet, Roussel. And takes down Soon Long, but Soon Long will be pushed through to the A final again later on in this final day session. So they drop the lights. The Zamboni will have a lot of work to do after all the racing we just saw over the last hour or so. A look at the A finalists there. Desmet, Dubois, Lin, Pierre Gillet, and Soon Long advanced. 
the bottom four heading to the B final. So we'll take a bit of a break and come back. And we're in the waning moments of World Cup three here in Beijing. We'll come back with the women's and men's A finals in the thousand, the finals in the 500, and then we'll cap it off with the A finals of both the women's 3000 relay and the men's 5000 relay. So we'll take a timeout, come back in approximately, I'm guessing about 10 to 15 minutes. And some medals are on the line when we come back. Stay tuned. Yeah, 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 yeah
and gentlemen, coming up 1,000 meter women finals. Please stay tuned. 女士们、先生们，女子一千米项目决赛即将开始，敬请期待。Well, it's pretty compelling replay melt put together of all the action we've seen just over the course of today. World Cup Beijing winding down, and now we get the brass tacks. Time for medals, time for B finals, A finals, relay finals. That's all we have left here in the final day in Beijing. And if you're just chipping into the broadcast, you picked the perfect time because after this B final of the Women's Thousand, we're gonna get one of those rare, very compelling heads up races between right now, in my opinion, the two best female short trackers in the world, Kristen Santos Griswold of the United States and Kim Gilly of Korea. They will be in the A final for the Thousand coming up momentarily. There are the starters for the B final. And we'll see two from China, Zhu Ali, Zhang Yi, Claudia Gagnon of Canada, Florence Brunel, the teenager from Canada, and So We Min, who came into this third World Cup here in Beijing as the top-rated skater in this classification. But there's no A final for So We Min this weekend in the 1,000. So the skaters will be briefly introduced as this B final is ready to get going. Zhang Yi is 24 years of age. Eight World Cup podiums over her career, all relays. And here's the 24-year-old from Montreal, Claudia Gagnon. Fourth in the thousand of the worlds a year ago. And here's So We Min. Bronze in the thousand, the first World Cup in Montreal. She won gold the next week in Montreal in the thousand, but rendered back into the B-Final this weekend in Beijing. And there's Florence Brunel, teenager for a few more weeks. Bright, bright future for her. And there's Zhu Ai 27-year-old from China, radiant smile, and heading up to the line. Five for the B-Final in the women's thousand. Helmet game for Gagnon, strong, underway. Nine laps for the B final in the women's thousand. Okay, to start, we have two Chinese skaters and two Canadian skaters on the ice. And that is Brunel. Out in front, Gagnon making a quick burst from the back. She'd rather race from the front. Best crowd we have seen over the course of the three days here in Beijing today. And for the crescendo of this first World Cup that Beijing has hosted in a couple of years. And again, they hosted the Olympic Winter Games in February of 2022, but this is the first major short track event since. Zhu Ali in the lead, four and a half laps to go. Brunel second, and then Gagnon third. So we men, again, the top rated 
1,000 meter skater coming into this weekend right now, last in the B final, now makes a move from fifth up to second. Inside the last three laps. And so we men will complete the last to first in two laps. And the bell is awaiting so we men coming out of this corner. So it is so we men in the lead. Zhu Ali second, Ganyon faltering back in third. And so we men will steer around that last corner and she will win the B final. Zhu Ali of China second, Ganyon third, and then Zhang and Brunel. So that will pick up some key points in the Crystal Globe standings, winning the B final for so we men. Should keep her near, if not still at the top of the classification rankings at the thousand. We'll see how the A final plays out. So we man, just 21 years old. Former world junior champion four years back in the 15. Depth on both the men's and women's side for the Korean national team, just incredible. They've been the, the program to be chased by basically every country around the world for about as long as this sport has been in existence. So there are the official results from the B final. And now ready for the first medal event of the last day here in Beijing. A final of the women's thousand. There's an updated look at the Crystal Globe overall standings, and we will see the top two in this race. Kim Gilly, 55 points up on Kristen Santos Griswold. Now they've gone head to head in an A final three times over the course of this World Cup season already, and they will do it again. You go back to the first week in Montreal, in the second running of the 1,000, Kim Gilly won gold, Santos Griswold bronze. Then the next week, it happened a couple of times, both at the 1,500 meter distance. They ran it twice. First day, Kim Gilly won gold, Santos Griswold silver. The next day, Gilly silver, Santos Griswold bronze. So is this the day that Santos Griswold finally gets the better of Kim Gilly? That seems to be about the last box that needs to be checked for Santos Griswold, but make no mistake, Kristen Santos Griswold is, in my estimation right now, one of the top two best female short track speed skaters in the world. And she will have inside position. There's Gong Lee. She'll be in position two, the 23-year-old. Won her first individual World Cup podium earlier this weekend, taking silver in the 15. And there's the phenom from Korea, Kim Gilly. 19 years old, overall number one skater this year, fourth overall last year. Corey Stoddard, the second American in this A final. She's reached an individual podium twice in her career, both bronze, never higher. Opportunity to better that here today. And Lee Soyeon will round out the field. Soyeon, 30 years of age. She's been in a World Cup podium once this year. Back in Montreal, the season's opening week. Won silver in the thousand. It is silver to Santos Griswold. Now, Santos Griswold has already won gold this weekend. And this would be a rarity for an American skater, female skater that is, to win World Cup multiple golds in the same weekend. She won the 500 yesterday and will be one of the top two favorites to win gold here in this 1,000 A final. And if you're tuning in this week and see one race, this is the one. Gilly v. Santos Griswold.
It will be really interesting to see stylistically how this race is run because we've seen Santos Griswold middle of the pack. We've seen Gilly win races from the back and the front. What strategy will play out and how will one skater strategy change the others? And it is Gilly, at least for the opening lap and a half, setting a soft pace. Santos Griswold third, and there goes Corey Stoddard for the U.S. Trying to inject yourself in the metal mix. Gong Lee third. And at the back of the pack is Lee Soyun. So there goes Santos Griswold right past Gilly. A little bit of contact, and it'll shuffle Gilly back into fourth. So the two Americans out front, Stoddard and Santos Griswold. Four laps left. Gilly right now sitting in fifth. And now Santos Griswold looks for the inside pass that her teammate easily gets past Stoddard. And it's Santos Griswold is the skater to catch. And where is Kim Gilly? Still at the back of the pack with two laps to go. This will be very tough for Kim Gilly. Santos Griswold taps the gas. There's the bell. Gilly is still last. Santos Griswold. This is another double gold weekend for Santos Griswold. Gilly will never get there. Santos Griswold, gold again. And Stoddard, her first ever silver medal. It's a one-two finish for the Americans. And Kristen Santos Griswold, two World Cup golds in the span of 24 hours. What a moment for now arguably the best female short tracker in the world. This will elevate Santos Griswold to a level in the world she's never been. I mean, we have seen radical improvement from Santos Griswold from a couple of years ago. Notable improvement in terms of her form, her speed, her strategy, year over year from last year to this year. But she has finally gotten past Kim Gilly for the first time head to head. And Gilly was a non-factor. It looked like she was about to be a factor, but early in the race, there was some contact between Santos Griswold and Gilly, and that knocked Gilly far afield. And I tell you what, it looks like Santos Griswold's happier for Corey Stoddard than she is for herself. It's been a long time coming for Corey Stoddard. Two individual World Cup medals in her career, both bronze. And now, a silver medal for Corey Stoddard. This is one of the biggest individual days for American female and short track speed skating in a long, long time. And the results are official. Gong Lee for the bronze. Kim Gilly misses the podium. And Santos Griswold atop the podium in Beijing for a second time this weekend. And as quickly as she caught her breath, it's time to head back onto the ice for the victory ceremony in the women's 1,000 meter.
and winner of the silver medal. 获得银牌的是 Representing United States of America. 美国队 Corinne Stoda. The first place and winner of the gold medal. 获得金牌的是 Representing United States of America. 美国队 Kristen Santos Griswold. So the medal ceremony complete for the women's thousand meter. Double gold this weekend for American Kristen Santos Griswold. And you saw just a moment ago the updated Crystal Globe standings. Kim Gilley still in the front, but the lead has been shrunk down to just 15 points. And right now the, the hottest skater on the women's side in short track is Kristen Santos Griswold. Again, a few weeks ago at the Fort Cottage, she swept all three individual events, and that came on the heels of World Cup Two, where Santos Griswold earned a silver and a bronze. She won gold in the 1,000 in the first World Cup event in Montreal. Boy, what a year she's having. Ladies and gentlemen, men's 1,000 meters. There's a long way to go and a laundry list of other accomplishments for the American. Santos Griswold, and a huge race for Corey Stoddard as well. So now we move on to the B final for the men's 1,000 meter. We will see six in the A final because of a dead heat in the second semifinal about an hour ago. So five will skate away here in the B final. Lucas Beckenhauser of Italy. We'll see Niall Tracy, who's had a just a, a really solid World Cup campaign for him over the first three events. He'll be in this race. There's a look at Speckenhauser. Came into this weekend the number two ranked skater at this distance. Took silver in Montreal, the first World Cup event. But he's one of the more exciting late race skaters you'll find on the men's side. Here's Niall Tracy. Again, just missing out on an A final for the second time over the course of this World Cup season. Roberts Kruzbergs. Who's advanced into the quarterfinals. And there is Didiana Sedge Paul from the Czech Republic. And Maxime Laon of Canada. So that 27 year old Canadian rounds out the five in the B final. Cruzberg's out early. Tracy of Great Britain are now sitting second. Speckenhauser, Laon, 
Sedge Paul. Fans, I would imagine, still catching their breath off of that wonderful A final race we just witnessed. And we're due for another one here on the A final on the men's side. When this is done, we'll see Park Ji Wan, we'll see Lu Xiao Wang, William Dangelo, Van Schwoots, Lee Wenlong. I mean, it's a who's who in the A final coming up in a moment. Still, Kruisberg's in the lead. Tracy remains second. Final two and a half left. Beckenhauser in a comfortable third place position. This is around the time when he starts to get in the mix. And now Speckenhauser goes out wide, gets around Kruisberg, tracing the lead, but a gap to the inside and an easy pass for the lead for Speckenhauser. Final corner for Luca, and Speckenhauser will win the B final. Tracy finishing second, and Lewin up for third for Canada. Final complete. You like Speckenhauser's position in that race about midway through. There wasn't blazing speed in the front, and we know how well he closes. Just too much room on the inside as Tracy just drifted a bit to his right and gave Speckenhauser just an easy crease on the inside to pass and carry that one to the line. So Lucas Speckenhauser from Italy claims the B final. And the 22 year old really rounding into good form. But his sights have to be set on A finals from here on out, but he'll, he'll be content with this. But he has the, the quality and the ability to be in a lot of A finals at this distance in particular. So now ready for the introductions of the six skaters in the 1,000 meter A final. The Crystal Globe standings, Kim Gun Wu. With a healthy lead on Park Juwan. We will see Park Juwan in this A final along with Dan Janu and Van Schwoots. And here's a look at how they got here. And again, we are not used to seeing six in an A final here in the 1,000. But in the second semifinal, Jang Sun Wu and Jens Van Schwoot, a dead heat for third, which was the fastest time of the two semifinal heats. So they both were advanced. So we'll see six instead of five. Yeah, there's William D'Angelo. Who's claimed one individual gold World Cup medal for the first time in his career this year. He's been on the podium four times now, including yesterday, a bronze in the 1500. And his form is sharp. And the first A final on Chinese soil representing China for Liu Xiaoang. In a packed house. As Liu struts toward the ice. 22-year-old Olympian in Van Schwoots. Gold in the thousand in the second World Cup event in Montreal. He took bronze earlier this weekend in the 500. Here's Jang Sun Wu, who matched the time of Van Trout in that semifinal. The dead heat sent him to the A-final as well. And here is Park ji the defending Crystal Globe champion. Long will round out the field. 22 year old Olympic silver medalist in the thousand finished just behind Renzi Wei. You know, Park Jiwan, he's been on top of the podium once so far this World Cup season that came in Montreal the first week in the thousand. Silver the next week in the 1500. He did stick around to race in the four continents in Laval the following week. 
But we've yet to see the real dominant form from Park G1 so far. High quality field. And how meaningful would it be if Liu Xiaowang in this A final can win gold representing China in the red and black for the first time in his career. He will not come easy. Dan Jano has been very stiff competition all season long. So we are off. Dan Jano, Liu Van Schwoots at the outset, out front. We'll see how Park Jiwan wants to race this when he right now is settling toward the back of the pack at fifth. So Van Schwoot with the next pack of Dan Janu, Jang, Park Jiwan. And Liu Xiaowang right now begins to make a move forward up into fourth. Swerving in the inside past Park G1. Liu is now in third. Park fourth. It is still Van Schwoots and Dangeno, the front two. Four laps left. And now Liu begins to press forward. Contact. Down goes Van Schwoot. Dangeno in front. Liu is second. That will be reviewed. Dangeno takes a peek. And now everybody ganging up on him. Liu Xiaowang. Here comes Park G1 deep on the inside. He's in a third. Inside the final lap and a half. William D'Angelo. Liu Xiaowang. Does he have one last blast in him? D'Angelo begins to pull away. One last shot. Here's Park Juwan as well. D'Angelo Navig gets the corner and will claim gold unofficially. Liu Xiaowang for silver. Park Juwan up for bronze. But again, a video review will occur on an incident earlier in the race. And that involved Anjanou and Jens Van Twoot. So Liu Xiaowang unofficially finishing in silver position, but depending on what occurs out of this video review, we'll see how this looks. Anjanou out of breath being congratulated by his coaching staff, but right now they're a bit on pins and needles to see how this plays out because the potential penalty they're looking at would be assessed against Dangenu if they determine that's the case, but that's what they're looking at. A potential penalty against Dangenu, against Van Schwoot, and if that is determined to be a penalty, Liu Xiaowang would be elevated to the top of the podium for China. And that's why the celebration by D'Angelo is a bit muted, although he does go with his patented flap across the finish line in a race he wins, but you might need to lower the wings a bit. We'll see what the official has determined. And the crowd cheers. And it does appear as though a penalty will be assessed against Anjanu. And now congratulations come to Liu Xiaowang. First time representing China on Chinese ice. The penalty will elevate Liu Xiaowang to the gold. And the cycle complete for Liu Xiaowang. There is the official result. Dan Janu does draw the penalty. And Liu Xiaowang elevated to the gold. Park Ji Wan silver. Zhang Sun Wu for the bronze. And a dispirited William Dan Janu penalized and knocked off the podium. Here's the look. The lane change for Dan Janu on the outside. The red and black spilled Van Schwoots out of there. Dan Janu went on to unofficially win the race but the yellow box appeared immediately, and that review did not take long. And D'Angelo was on the verge of his second career individual World Cup gold, but not today, not here. And Liu Xiaowang, in just his third World Cup event, no longer representing Hungary, now representing China, with the penalty, he will be awarded his first individual World Cup gold 
representing China on Beijing ice. Let's join the ceremony. Medal ceremony complete. Updated Crystal Globe standings. Kim Gun Wu is still on top, but certainly an emotional win for the entire Chinese delegation. Liu Xiaowang claims his first individual World Cup gold medal representing China. Coming full circle, following his coach from Hungary back here to China along with his brother. And a very special moment, not only to win your first individual gold medal, but do it in Beijing. So now we'll head straight to the B final of the women's 500, second running over this weekend. 
Santos Griswold of the U.S. won the first running yesterday. We just saw Kristen Santos Griswold claim her second individual gold this weekend in the 1,000, so we will not have a repeat here in the 500. On the men's side, we do have a shot. Jordan Pierre Gillet coming up in a couple of minutes. He will have a chance to repeat. He won the 500 men's first running yesterday. And we'll see four skaters in this B final. In the brief introductions, Courtney Serro of Canada. Serro, one of the top skaters in the world coming into this World Cup season. Yet to get on a World Cup podium so far this year. And no chance here this weekend now. A B final for Serro. There's Wang Yi. 18-year-old from China. Shim Saki, one of the sports legends. Form getting a little bit better. Certainly not at her expectations or her past history, but she's now back in this B final. And Anna Desmets of Belgium. So those are the four in the B final of the women's 500. And for a number of these skaters in this B final, this 500 is really not their best distance. Certainly not for Soro and not for Desmet. And you might look at the possibility of Wang Yi, the youngster from China. This could suit her well, and she is out in front. Shim Suk Hee right now second, Soro third. But still developing is Wang Yi, still in front. Desmet making a charge. Coming up on the bell lap. Still the Chinese teenager, Wang Yi. Desmet tries to make a move, can't get through on the inside. Still Wang Yi. The final back straight. Shim Suk Hee swings wide. And how about the teenager from China, Wang Yi. Defends beautifully. And the 18-year-old takes down the B final. Desmet made a couple of determined attempts to get around Wang Yi. Couldn't do it. So Wang Yi, thumbs up to her coaching staff. Thumbs up to family and friends undoubtedly in attendance. Tight for second, Shim Suk Hee and a hand at his mat. So Wang Yi puts it away. Not a bad way to finish off the weekend. Although we still do have the women's 3,000 meter relay, but China will not be in the A final. The men will, but the women fail to make the A final. The results soon to be official, then we'll move on to the A final of the women's 500. There are the results. Desmet did get up for second. Nudging past Shim Suk Hee, Courtney Sorrell, fourth. So the second running of the A final 500. Santos Griswold, Yvonne Kashin, Wang Yi, gold, silver, bronze yesterday. There's the updated Crystal Globe standings. Now just a 15 point spread between Kim Gilley and Kristen Santos Griswold. It's a pretty good weekend for Wang Yi. Bronze the 500 yesterday, and now claims the B final today, and she still is a teenager for China. Haven't seen her a lot on the world stage at the senior level, but making her mark. Now this will be a peculiar race. Five racers in the A finals, three from the Netherlands, two from China. And there's Selma Poutma who will have inside position in this race. She's taken silver twice this World Cup season. Xander Velzebor, one of the ultimate 500 skaters last year. 
She'll be in the second position, and the third Dutch skater will be her sister. There's Michelle Vilsebor, who surprised her sister gliding past Xandra when that semifinal ended. So they will race in the same A final. Now, Von Kashin, who finished with the silver medal yesterday in the first running of the 500. Five-time world champion in this event early in her career. And Wang Jinran will round out the group of five. 22 years of age, her best individual finish is fifth. Shot at her first individual World Cup medal. So those are the five. Large crowd all around Capital Indoor Stadium. And great to see the popularity of this board just continue to grow. And the skaters called to the start line. Who do you like? Some great storylines here. You have the, the history, the success of Fon Kishin. The recent domination of this level of Xander Velzebor. Selma Poutsman has really jumped on the scene. A final, women's five. Or will we see a surprise? Maybe Michelle Velzebor or Wang Jinran. We won't see anything yet. And this is commonplace. If you've been with us through the course of this final day session, it took four restarts, in other words, five attempts to finish off a semi-final in the women's 500. And, and many of those restarts involved slips or crashes involving Helmet 16 and Michelle Velzebor, and she's now at it again. As a matter of fact, the, the, last, the last incident before that race was finally started without incident. Park Juwan of Korea was, was penalized and sent off after a second bit of connection going into that first corner with Michelle Velzebor. So, I mean, if, if you're on equipment repair duties for the Dutch, you're staying close to pads with Michelle Velzebor in this 500. Because those boots are being worked on a handful of times about an hour ago. Still can be a bit un unsettling for everybody else. And in that semifinal, her sister was in it as well. Selma Poutsma was also. They, they were never involved. But the whistles kept blowing behind them. Didn't, though, in the end, bother Poutsma at all or Sandra Velzebor. But now it's an A final, and the stakes are higher. As is the anxiety. So we'll try it again. And this now, you'd almost think it'd be a little bit mental for Michelle Velzebor. This has now happened with her four times in an hour. The race to the corner. Another little stumble, Velsbor almost went down again. But the race is on and here we go. Poutsma and Xander Velsbor right now break away from the pack. Von Kashin right now third. That is Velsbor and Wang. Two and a half laps to go and right now it's a match race between the two teammates, Poutsma and Velsbor. Velsbor swings in, gets the pass. Poutsma trying to reclaim it. Bell lap. Poutsma and Xander Velsibor. And it's Xander Velsibor in front, final corner. Poutsma goes in, can't get through, and it's Xander Velsibor taking gold in the 500. Poutsma for silver, Fon Kashin with her second medal of the weekend in the 500. She'll take bronze after winning silver yesterday. But for Xander Velsibor, you have to think that that's just a big moment to kind of relax and exhale. She finally gets back to the top of the podium since the 
very first 500 of this World Cup season. And the expectations that she puts on herself are very, very high. But Ricky Doak and Santos Griswold have claimed gold of the last couple of World Cups. Santos Griswold came yesterday in the 500, but I mean, Velsbor still feels like she's really one of the, if not the, top 500 skaters in the world, especially still without Kim Bhutan racing and Suzanne Schultz in racing. And Velsbor gets over the hump here in Beijing. And Pautzma, for the third time in four World Cup 500 races, third silver for Selva Pautzma. And there's the release by Belzebor. Huge competitors when the race is on, great friends and teammates when it's over. And you saw that reaction with Belzebor and Poutsman. So they will get ready for the on ice medal ceremony and will join the PA announcer from Capitol Indoor Stadium for the medal ceremony for the women's 500.
Medal ceremony complete. Xander Belzebor for the second time this World Cup season wins the 500. And now ready for the last individual medal events of this World Cup weekend in Beijing. It's the second running of the men's 500. We'll get to the B final first. And then we'll see if Jordan Pierre Gillet can sweep the two 500 events in Beijing. But first, in the B final, Kai Hausman of the Netherlands, Brennan Corey of Australia, Quentin Fercoq of France, and then Italy's Pietro Siegel. This has been a fun World Cup weekend, and it doesn't end. Fourth World Cup event. Later on this week in Seoul, South Korea. We'll have all that coverage beginning later this week. So there's Hausman. Brendan Corey, good to see the Aussie here in a B final. Corey's had a fine weekend. 26 years of age, born in Canada. Here's Quentin Faircock of France. Silver in the first run of the 500 yesterday. So he's been on a podium twice this year. And there's Pietro Siegel. He was on a podium the first week as well. And the 1,000 claiming bronze. So these four in the B final. Quick start by Hausman. Corey has been a bit of a front runner on the ice over the course of the weekend. Likes to be in the top two or three. And motoring ahead, Faircock behind him, and then back to Siegel. Two laps left. There's the pass from Faircock. Corey third, and here comes Siegel. Can't get around Corey, he'll try in. The bell lap. Hausman still in front, Faircock Looks for the inside pass, he'll get there, entering the corner, then he'll slip and crash out, and Siegel will get up to win it. He was the last guy who expected to win after that move that carried Faircoke to the lead. But as he was coming out of the very last corner near that marker, lost his balance and a hard spill into the pads, and that opened things up, a shocking fall, and Pietro Siegel sneaked on the inside and stole it away. Let's see if we can pick up anything that happened on this pass. There it is by Farrakoe. He worked hard to get back inside and right out of the corner. I mean, he makes the turn, the race is his, but he didn't. And Siegel, kind of out of nowhere, left behind. Found a lot of room on the inside, shortened the distance, and got inside Hausman. And the surprise finish by the Italian. Hausman second, Corey stumbles to the line third in the B final. So there's Farrakulk and Siegel asking what happened. That's not really how you want your last individual event of the World Cup to end, but it is short track. And they've all been there. Official results. So Seagal will claim the B final. And that will take us now to the last medal event individually here in Beijing this weekend. They ran the 500 yesterday. Claimed by Jordan Pierre Gillet who still is not top 10 in the overall Crystal Globe standings, but another win here today would very well do it. So he's going to have that rare opportunity to win both of the 500s run in the same World Cup weekend. And we will see five in this A final. And here are the official introductions. But for the double or the sweep to occur for Pierre Gillade. He'll have a tough teammate and competitor in inside position. There he is, Stephen Dubois. 
the world number three out of last year. He's second overall classification this year. And he's been on a podium a couple of times already. Tries to get there for a third time. Stan Desmet, 25 years of age. Took silver in the 1500 in the first World Cup in Montreal. So here's Jordan Pierre Gillet. Won the 500 yesterday. Won the 500 in Montreal in the second week. And an opportunity at a sweep. Lin Zhaojun of China. He will have the crowd behind him as he tries to get a top of podium for the first time this year. And Soon Long will be the fifth, and he was actually advanced to the A final via penalty in the last semifinal about an hour ago. So the penalty charge to Felix Roussel, and that gives Soon Long an opportunity here in the A final. So two Canadians, two from China, and Desmet from Belgium. And you know who the crowd wants to win. Chance in their support. For Lin Zhaojun, he'll be in position four. There he is, that's Soon Long. He'll be in position five. And again, Dubois has not had any issues getting out of that first corner when he's in inside position in this 500. And if he does that again, it's going to be a tough row to hoe for Pierre Gillet to catch him. So the start will be critical for both Dubois and Pierre Gillet. And away we go. And Dubois once again claims the corner. And he's off to the races. Desmet second, Pierre Gillet third. Now can anybody track down Stephen Dubois or capitalize if he makes a small mistake? Pierre Gillet looking for the sweep in the 500 this weekend, but he'll have work to do. He's fourth. Lin up to second. Little contact with Dubois. They battle into the far corner. Dubois still in front. There's the bell. It's anybody's race. And Pierre Gillet is weaved forward. He's got a shot here. Final corner, Dubois will navigate it on the inside, the stretch, and Pierre Gillet finishes the gold sweep for the 500. A stunning finish for Jordan Pierre Gillet. Almost left for dead in fourth place with a couple of laps to go. Never gave up. There was a slight bit of contact involving Dubois and another skater that might have just knocked Dubois a bit off stride. And next thing you know, coming out of that last corner, Dubois drifted a bit to the middle of the track and Pierre Gillet stole it away on the inside with the stretch of the right blade. So a rarity in short track, running the 500 twice in the same weekend, and the same skater, Jordan Pierre Gillet of Canada, does get the gold sweep. And this is the final corner. It looked like it was Dubois to take. And as he exits the corner, just cut a little bit wide, and Pierre Gillet ducked in, took the shorter distance, and got the stretch barely ahead of Dubois. And Sun Long appeared to get up for the bronze. And there's the photo, there's the stretch. And it is Pierre Gillet, Dubois, and Sun. We have seen some remarkable breakouts by Canadian skaters this World Cup season. D'Angino, Doak, Blay. But I don't know that any more has been impressive than what we've seen from Jordan Pierre Gillet over the course of back-to-back -back World Cup. 
took the 500 in Montreal the second week and sweeps the two 500s in Beijing in the next event. So Jordan Pierre Gillet, part of the relay gold medal team at the Olympics for Canada last year. He's making a name for himself individually at the World Cup level. And he is called to the center of the ice for the medal ceremony. Let's join it. Medal ceremony complete. Jordan Pierre Gillet of Canada does sweep the two 500 events over the course of this weekend in Beijing. There are the updated Crystal Globe standings. Stevie Dubois still trailing Kim Gun Wu. So the individual events are done, and we'll have what should be a very brief respite here as they resurface the ice, and all we have left are the two A finals for the relays. The women's 3000 relay will feature Canada, the Netherlands, Korea, and Poland. 
And then we'll wrap things up with the men's 5,000 relay, China, the Dutch, Korea, and Canada. So they will take care of the ice, get us ready, and we will close things down in Beijing coming up. We're back on the ice in about 14 minutes time with the two relays as we close down World Cup 3 in Beijing. Ladies and gentlemen, 3,000 meters relay women's final A is coming up at 1718.
征战的最后一个比赛日，时间过得也是非常非常的快，那么稍后还会有最后两个项目的比赛，希望大家可以一直享受我们的赛场，享受短道速滑给大家带来的魅力。那么也希望我们所有的运动员可以远离伤痛，没有伤病。为我们带来一场又一场精彩的对决，好吧，现场的各位，再次感谢大家的配合，让我们一起享受我们北京站最后的时光，再次来点掌声，好吗 ？OK， 感谢各位，让我们一起享受精彩的比赛吧。
Well, there are the moments for the final day of World Cup three here in Beijing. We're back for the final two events, both A finals. You know, the women's 3,000 relay, the men's 5,000 relay. It is taking a look at the results we've seen over the course of this weekend. As you get a look at the World Cup standings for the women's 3,000 relay with the Dutch on top after a couple of events. Who would have forecast that Canada and the United States would have the most individual golds exiting this World Cup in Beijing. But that's a fact. And from just one skater apiece in those countries, Jordan Pierre Gillet claiming both 500 golds for Canada and Kristen Santos Griswold winning the 500 and the 1,000. The Dutch and Korea have the other individual golds on the women's side. And Louis Xiaowang of China and Kim Gun Woo of Korea have claimed the other two individual male events over the course of the weekend. So we're done with the individual races. And all we have left are the two big relays. And a huge crowd has gathered. And, I mean, this is one of the, the marquee events. The fans love it. The skaters love it. There's a lot to it. Strategy, luck, and usually a little bit more luck to get through. So here in the A final on the women's side, we'll see Team Canada. Right now, the number two team in the World Cup. They won gold in Montreal that first week, and then they claimed gold in the four continents in Laval a couple of weeks later. Here's the number one team ranked in the World Cup at this stage. The team from the Dutch. Been on the podium each of the first two World Cups. Bronze the opening week, gold in Montreal the following. Won the World Championship last year. They are the defending Olympic champions. See the five taking the ice. We'll see the four they select. There is the Korean team, Kim Gilly. She's had an exhausting couple of days. Shim suk Park ji and Lee so is out there for Korea. Currently the world number four. The Olympic silver medalist behind the Dutch in Beijing. And a rare appearance in an A final for the team from Poland. Overall world ranking number eight through the first couple of World Cup events. We'll see Mazur, Tiposka, Stormowska, and Majuska, the four on the ice for Poland. No medals in a World Cup this year, and no medals even last year in the 3,000 meter women's relay. So this is rarefied air for Poland, and if they can somehow sneak on the medal, this would absolutely make their weekend here in Beijing. So Canada expected to run out Bly, Brunel, Steenge, and Gagnon. Poutsma, Van Kirkhoff, and the Velzebor sisters expected to be out there for the Dutch. Then Kim Lee, Park, and Shim for Korea and the four skaters from Poland we just introduced. So 27 laps. There's Danae Blay. She will open the things up. Steens will be the leadoff leg for Canada. And Shim suk will start things off for Korea as they are called to the start line. And Nicola Mazur on the lead lap, opening things up for Poland. So away we go. 27 laps for the gold of the World Cup here in Beijing in the women's 3,000-meter relay. First exchange. That's Sandra Velzebor for the Dutch out there in front. Kim Gilly on the second leg, which means they are lined up to match up to anchor this one home. Korea, the Dutch, Canada, and then Poland right now fourth. And now it's Michelle Velzebor out there for the Dutch in second place. The lead still belongs to Korea. And the fourth skaters of this quartet are now on the ice as they finish the first cycle through. Jim Zucky makes the exchange for Korea. And Velzebor is back out there for the Dutch. The 
Sade Blaine and Stormowska out there for Poland. Team Korea has one medal so far in this World Cup campaign. Took silver in the second weekend in Montreal. Now back to Michelle Velzebor for the Netherlands. Second behind Korea. And now a little congestion. Canada takes a daring move. And now the Canadians are in second, stepping ahead of the Dutch. But all very tightly bunched, including Poland. You see that yellow box lower left. That last move to go from third to second by the Canadians is going to be reviewed. Kim Gilly with Dunne Bly right behind her. And the Dutch will swing forward, almost grab the lead, ran into some contact. And now the exchange will keep Korea in front as they've cleared the first bit of contact from a couple of laps ago, but another area will be reviewed. And there are the Dutch grabbing the lead from Korea. And Michelle Velzebor is out there trying to stay ahead of Park. And here comes Canada again. Finds room on the inside, and again the Canadians are in a second position. Both reviews have now been clear. Steams is out there for Canada. A little break between the Dutch and the Canadians. Back to the Koreans in third. And there will now be a third review over the course of this race. As Xander Velsbor gets passed on the inside and chases down the Canadian into that corner. And the lead still belongs to the Dutch. Bellsboard has claimed the 500 goal about an hour ago. Darvan Kirkhoff out there for the Dutch. Little slip coming out of that corner, but maintained her composure. Five laps to go. Still the Dutch. Big move by Canada. And there's the lead for the Canadians. Four laps left. Canada, the Dutch. And with the lead out there is Renee Stenge. Poutsma trying to track her down. Coming up on two laps to go. We'll see one last exchange. And here it comes, Danae Bly. On the ice for Canada inside the last two laps. Bly, here's the bell. A darting move by Xander Velsborg. She gets inside and the Dutch they have the lead. Final quarter. Sandra Velzebor brings it to the house for the Netherlands. Canada second, Korea for the bronze. And quite an hour it's been for the Dutch. Sandra Velzebor and Selma Pautzma finished gold, silver in the second racing of the 500. And Velzebor and Pautzma team up on a relay gold for the Netherlands. Canada silver, Korea the bronze. They are still reviewing one last incident from that race, but the celebration is on for the Dutch. And the top ranked women's 3,000 relay team so far this World Cup season collect their second consecutive gold. They've been on the podium all three events. Results not yet official. And there is a look at Michelle Dumont, who is on the headset, taking a look. And they're looking at a possible penalty that has not yet been cleared involving the Canadian team against Korea. So should that penalty go through, that would knock Canada all the way off the top of the podium. But again, Nothing determined yet. We are getting some more notes that there might have been a skater from the infield on the track illegally. And again, that is still unofficial, but that is one of the things that they're looking at here. But nothing ruled yet. So hold your tickets, as they say. This, this might change some of the outcomes, but... 
The Dutch appear to be in store for another gold. So we'll see what happens with Team Canada finishing runner-up to the Dutch. But they might be knocked down a couple of pegs here. And if they are, that would elevate Poland to a podium position for the first time. Again, the unofficial finish was the Netherlands, Canada, Korea, but they're taking a look at a potential penalty on the Canadians. And they would potentially bump Korea to the silver and place Poland at the bronze. Boy, there's a lot of kind of wistful looks over there by the Canadian team, and it looks like Canada has been penalized, judging by that reaction. There was a word right there that I can't repeat if I want to work again uttered by one of the Canadian skaters right there. So Korea is going to be bumped up and Poland's going to be on the podium. So here are the results. Then there is the official penalty on the Canadians. So Poland wins the bronze, Korea elevated to the silver and the Dutch for the second straight World Cup claim gold. And major disappointment for the Canadians. And here's a look. And it is about an inactive skater on the track right there. That's what they called, and I believe is that Brunel, who is trying to put herself in line for the next exchange, but drifted inside that blue line and actually looked like she made contact with a skate of another skater from a, a different team on the way by. And the officials caught it, and it has been ruled against Canada, so Canada Knocked off the podium, cost them points, cost them money, and Poland is up for the bronze. The results are now official, and there is Team Poland. They are, they're not used to this. Let's get ready for a, a podium entrance. They came in again, ranked number eight over the first couple of the World Cups. Well, they will enjoy this and reap the rewards. Let's go down to the ceremony on the ice.
朴志元、朴志润、沈西西。获得金牌的是 ，representing Netherlands， 荷兰队 ，Selma Postma， Yara Van Perkom， Dave Van Orshout， Michelle Van de Boren， Sandra Van de Boer。让我们向获奖运动员致敬。Updated World Cup standings after that running of the 3,000 meter relay. Poland with a bronze finish, now up to five as the Dutch claim yet another gold. Exciting race. Canada draws a penalty, falls off the podium and elevates Poland to its first women's relay medal of any kind in years. So congrats to Team Poland finishing with the bronze. So they will clear the ice and we will get ready for the very final race of this weekend in Beijing. And it will be the men's 45 lap, 5,000 meter relay. And we saw a really emotional reaction when Liu Xiaowang was elevated to gold in the 1,000 earlier today via penalty. And he'll be out there, expected to be on the ice to try and either anchor or set things up for China to claim gold. And we do have the at least preliminary lineups for this men's relay. And it would involve both of the Liu brothers along with Ren Ziwei and Soon Long as we get a look at the World Cup standings on the men's relay side. Canada, the current number one team. They've been on the podium each of the two World Cup events. China took gold in the second World Cup event in Montreal. Canada won gold in the opener. So the top three ranked teams, Canada, China, Korea, are in this A final. Then you get the Dutch, which came into this World Cup event ranked number 12 as a team, but here they are. They have never won an Olympic men's relay medal. They had one World Cup medal last year, earning silver in Almaty, but again, ranked number 12 coming in. That's a tall task with the best three teams in the world in front of them in this A final, but again, anything can happen as far as penalties go. We just saw Poland pushed up to the bronze position to do a penalty on Canada. So there's hope for the Dutch. 
And here are the four expected to go for Korea. Park ji Kim Gun-woo, Wang Dae-hoon, and so Yi Ra. And we saw Canada expecting to go out there with Pascal Dion and Simon Dubois added, replacing Laun Roussel if that lineup holds, joining Dan Zhou and Pierre Gillet. And there is Team China, the Liu brothers, Xiao Wang and Xiao Lin, Sun Long, Ren Zi Wei. Those are the four. And we're not used to seeing the Dutch in an A final of a men's relay, but here they are. You know them from the individual events, but here they are as a quartet. It's Zach Delat in the decorative helmet on the left. Jens Van Schwoot in the nine helmet. Kai Hausman in the 38 and Tune Boer in the 34. So they march out after the introduction and say, what, why did they introduce us? We're in an A final. Oh, here we go. Let's make a statement. So onto the ice come the Dutch. And if you want to talk about a team that has absolutely nothing to lose, go for it. It'd be the Dutch in this A final. So there's the star list. And there's the whistle. Final race of World Cup Beijing. Hope you've enjoyed the three days of coverage. World Cup action continues right on these airwaves. Later on this week, staying in Asia, but moving on to Seoul, South Korea. And will this be a fitting finish for the Chinese? I mean, this is exactly why, one of the reasons why the Liu brothers were so coveted to come back to China, follow their coach, strengthen their mixed relay, and definitely strengthen their men's relay. Looking ahead to the Olympics coming up in a couple of years, and... Both Lou brothers are in this group of four trying to bring home another World Cup gold here for China. So all the skaters call to the infield. We'll see who leads off the legs for these four countries. There's Van Schwoots. So they're called to the line, and it'll be Pierre Gillet opening things up for Canada. Liu Xiaowang on the starting line for China as we get underway. 45 laps, final event here in Beijing. Yang Sun Wu in helmet 26 is on the ice for Korea. So they have made a change to their starting four. Van Schwoots on the ice for the Dutch. Yang Sun Wu claimed bronze in the thousand earlier today. Maybe a reward to get him on the ice for this relay. So it's Canada, China, Korea. And the Netherlands. Stephen Dubois is out there, matched up against Sun Long. There was a time in this sport where basically all relays, men's and women, were dominated by the Koreans. That has shifted a bit over the last few years, Canada has gotten in the mix. China has had its moments. And certainly now China is right in the mix in terms of team strength. So no real favorite coming into this race. You can make a strong case for all three of these teams to win it. We'll see how they match up on the ice, where the mistakes are made, and where the gambles are paid. 35 laps to go, 10 laps in. Dubois with Sun right behind him. Canada and China still 1-2. The Dutch hanging around in fourth. Doubt we'll see any big moves from the Dutch. Boer is on the ice right now, but they might just be waiting for kind of the, the chaos of men's relays to occur, and maybe that's where they can you know, ladder up a, a spot or two. 
But right now they're staying with that front pack. That's D'Angelo out there for Canada. There is the exchange. China still a close second. And Dubois about to work his way off of the infield and be pushed forward on that exchange for Canada. Same alignment, Canada, China, Korea, and the Netherlands. Jang back on the ice for Korea. Sitting third, 26 laps to go. Get back now to D'Angelo for the Canadians. No real effort yet. Liu Shaolin on the ice, and there goes Park Jiwon of Korea. There's the first little move inside the middle of this race. And now it begins to pick up, and the strategy begins. China in front, Korea second, Canada shuffle to third. The Dutch are still fourth. So Long is out there. And China still working with the lead. And the Dutch making a move up ahead of Canada in the third. And the exchange now to Boer. And the Dutch remain third with Canada behind him. Inside the final 20 laps. Shaolin leading the way. Park Ji Wan right behind him. Laps are now below nine seconds. Picking up, they'll get into low weights as this race really ramps up here in a few laps. The Netherlands still hanging on to third. Dubois swerving, trying to get around the Dutch. Can't quite do it. And he's still blocked back and forth. Fifteen laps left. Two thirds of the way through. Liu Shawang is out there, matched up against Zhang. Canada has gone past the Dutch, back into third. And just one real brief moment, and now we see China try to stretch things out. Soon Long. Opening up the biggest lead, although it's modest, that we've seen in this entire race. Korea in the second. China still racing ahead. Ten laps to go. The Dutch in third. Canada fourth. Dubois the exchange. The inside pass by Canada up to third, but it's still China in the lead. They will take a look at some contact about a lap and a half back. Coming up on the final seven laps. China still on top. Park Juwan on the ice. He's about to pass on the inside by the Dutch, but he closes things down. An opportunity for the Netherlands, and they're up in a second. It's Zagalad is out there in second for the Dutch. China still in the lead. Four and a half laps to go, and Netherlands is still in second. Soon long for China. Powering forward. And the Beijing crowd try to help these Chinese skaters home. Coming up on two laps to go. One last exchange for Team China. Canada up in a second, the Dutch are third. Coming up on the bell lap. One last push by Team Canada. Swerve to the inside, and Canada does grab the lead. Contact. Down goes China, down go the Dutch, and Canada crosses the line first. Korea second, China third. Den Janelle carries it across the line. And Sebastian Cross, head coach for Team Canada. A little wry smile, a little applause. That's what happens at the end of these races. 
We saw a crash out, and that allowed Canada to potentially steal it away. China and the Dutch got tangled up, and a look of absolute dismay from Lu Shaolin. And they're gonna take a look at a, at a couple of moments in the back third of this race, but Team Canada is celebrating like this is a done deal. And the crowd was ready to give a rousing celebration to their quartet of skaters, but it doesn't appear as though that's gonna happen. Well, the Dutch surprisingly did get in the mix with about 10 or 11 laps to go that worked to their benefit most of the rest of the race until about the last lap and a half. And then you saw the skaters from China really had to work hard to get through these Dutch skaters. And as a result of a, of a crash out, it just opened up the floodgates for Canada to get through. And we're about at the mark of that race right here. And there's the pass by Canada to grab the lead. And right there, the fall by Lu Shaolin took the Dutch skater with them. And that opened things up for Dangino and Canada. And right there, down goes Shaolin, takes Jens Van Trude down with him. And open up the second podium spot for Korea. And there's the patented wide wingspan of the 6'3", William D'Angelo. Look at the smiles on the infield. Yeah, there's the reaction from the Canadian coaching staff. We'll take it. That short track relays. Pascal Dion, part of the relay. Dubois, D'Angelo, Pierre Gillet. And what they hope would be a storybook finish here in Beijing at the end of the World Cup with a men's relay gold for China, not in the cards. And the results are official, no penalties assessed. China did get up for the bronze, the Dutch finished fourth, but it was a lot more complicated than that. So Canada wins the gold here in Beijing, Korea the silver, and China takes bronze. And now the sportsmanship between all the athletes, the coaches as World Cup Beijing comes to a close. But these skaters will have just a little bit of training on their own and then fly off to Seoul, South Korea early in the week and get ready for the fourth stop on the World Cup circuit this year in Seoul later on this week. We'll have all of that coverage coming up, depending where you are, Friday or maybe in North America, uh, late Thursday night with day one from Seoul. Let's go down to the ice one last time for the victory ceremony, celebrating the Canadians, winners in the 5,000 relay.
刘少林、任子威、孙龙。The second place and the winners of the silver medal. 获得银牌的是 Representing Republic of Korea. 韩国队 Huang Dahyung, Jung Sung Woo, Kim Dong Woo, Lee Jung Ming, Park Jin Won, and Zhu Yira. Huang Dahyun, Zhang Chengyu, Jin Jianyong, Lee Jung Min, Piao Jiyuan, Xu Yira. The first place and the winners of the gold medal. 获得金牌的是 Representing Canada. 加拿大队 William Dantino, Pascal Dian, Stephen Du Bois, Maxine Lau, Jordan Pierre-Gilles, and Felix Roussel. Updated World Cup standings for the men's relay. Canada still on top, China second, Korea third. But an exciting men's relay closes down with a Canadian victory. And that will put a full wrap on World Cup Beijing over the course of this weekend. And what a weekend it was for two skaters individually, specifically Kristen Santos Griswold of the United States. A pair of individual gold medals. Same on the men's side for Jordan Pierre Gillet of Canada, claiming both races at the 500 meter. So that will cap things here in Beijing. The great crowds will disperse, and that will end things here in Beijing. But the World Cup's fourth stop, only a few days away for all of these skaters. You expect everybody to Head over to Seoul, South Korea for 
day one, which will begin either Friday or late Thursday, depending on where you are across the globe. And you can check out all of the replays, key some certain races, or if you want to watch the entire uh, repetition shots from day two here in Beijing or the final full day here on day three, head to the ISU YouTube page. So for our entire crew, for Natalie Lambert, who is our referee liaison in Beijing, Patrick Kinas saying so long. Thank you for your dedication and tuning in to ISU coverage of the short track World Cup season. We will see you next weekend in Seoul, South Korea.